wins. Speed intimidates. And in modern football, speed rules. No one has a more staggering surplus of game-changing, breathtaking speed in the backfield than number four, West Virginia. Tonight, methodical, steady Maryland must contain all that speed to produce a signature victory, earn respect, and settle a score. Will the speedy hares learn to fear the tortoise tonight? Welcome back to College Park, Maryland. The pyrotechnics, all the motivational gimmicks as the Terps run out dressed in all black just as the student body is. They did a 120-yard sprint after touching Testudo there, ran right to the base of the student section to be embraced by this crowd. A good atmosphere here tonight, but also plenty of West Virginia fans have made the 200-mile drive from Morgantown here to College Park. It is ACC versus Big East. College football primetime presented by Applebee's. Chris Fowler back with Doug Flutie, Craig James, and Aaron Andrews. These teams have met every year since 1980. For a while, Maryland had the upper hand until Rich Rodriguez and West Virginia turned it around in recent years, and this game was a beatdown in Morgantown a year ago, something very much on the minds of the Maryland players. Maryland players have circled this game throughout the summer. You know, there are a lot of friendships back and forth. The rivalry's there. And so you will expect a Maryland defense, and they better be good, Doug, because if they don't come out quick and fast and hard, they're in trouble. This offense of West Virginia can put some points on the board in a hurry. Maryland got through the first two games with wins and got them behind them, but they've been eyeing this, circled it, as you said, and are looking forward to West Virginia. This is a measuring stick for them for this season. You got it. This is not Villanova and Florida International on the field tonight against Maryland. These two head coaches, both at their alma maters, both in their seven seasons, and would you believe it, both with identical one-loss records of 52 and 24. I love the fact that coaches go back to their schools and coach. The Lord the blood they've shed on those campuses. I really like that. It's a good trend in college football. Now, Friedgen worried, waited about three decades for his first head coaching job. He's made the most of it here at Maryland. But the Terrapin faithful expect even bigger things than last year's nine wins. They have big expectations here. And, of course, West Virginia has sky-high expectations. Their fans dreaming of playing in the BCS championship game down in New Orleans. There is the starting quarterback. For the starting running back, Steve Slayton, he's the leader with 43 touchdowns in his career. You can see the crowd getting revved up already. You got to have the crowd. You got to take advantage of the home field. You know, and your fans, the team's jacked up. Now they got to play football. West Virginia was at home last year. Maryland got wiped out. They got their home crowd behind them. The blackout, as they want to call it, dressed head to toe in black and ready to roll. A little motivation for it. But you know, once you get through this first quarter, it settles into a real football game. West Virginia won the toss. They deferred to the second half. Going somewhat against the trend of this season with the kickoff back at the 30-yard line. We've seen more teams want the football to open it. Instead, it's the Maryland offense in front of this juiced-up sellout crowd. Very good boot by Pat McAfee throughout the end zone. And the Terrapins with the touchback will start at the 20-yard line. Let's meet the Maryland offense. Andrew Crummy. Introduces to his teammates. Let's start off with the backfield with a two-headed rushing attack with K Lat or Keon Lattimore and Lance Boogie Ball. Move out to receiver with the speedy Darius Hayward Bay. On the offensive line, we have Edwin Williams at center, the quarterback of the offensive line, or Black Ice. We have left guard Jamie Thomas and Scott Swizzle Burley at left tackle. <laughs> Four juniors and a senior up front for Maryland. These guys would love to be able to smash this smaller, quicker West Virginia defense. Did not work out last year. Ian Lattimore, the senior, is the tailback. Two tight ends, and they misfire in the very first snap of the game. West Virginia has recovered at the 20. Mark Magro, the linebacker, got low and got the football in a disastrous start for Jordan Steffi in his first real big game as a starter. The real question mark uh, was regarding Steffi was whether or not he would be composed. No question about his leadership ability, but he's an antsy guy. Watch him pull out quick. Dougie just got the ball low. He's coming out early. Yeah, he's an excitable kid, and he might have pulled out a little bit early. I don't know, but last year they had the same problem early on, making mistakes, turnovers. You cannot get behind against this West Virginia team. And now White 
Slayton and company have a very short field to work with at the Maryland 20. Slayton and Owen Schmidt flanking White, the quarterback. Slayton bounced and dropped for a loss. What you see defensively are seven in the box. That's the running opportunity for West Virginia, but you got to play seven up the field. Penetration at the line of scrimmage, critical in order to stop West Virginia's offense. Second and 12. It's noisy at that end in front of the students. White's got it, and he's got a crease. Pat White into the secondary, into the end zone. And now the noise is coming from the West Virginia end of the stadium. White makes Freegan's club pay for the early miscue. And there's the speed. You know, it's exactly like last year's game. Mistakes by Maryland. West Virginia takes advantage of it, sticks it right in the end zone. It was 28 to nothing at the end of the first quarter last year. And now 45 seconds into the game. Mountaineers break on top with Pat McAfee for the conversion. Yeah, this is shades of what happened in Morgantown when Friedgen was down 14 nothing before his team had run an offensive play. So West Virginia, one minute in, puts Friedgen's club in a hole. Another chance for Maryland when you come back. This game is being broadcast on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. The definition of a bad start for a revved up home team with a sellout crowd is a fumbled snap on the opening play from scrimmage and then an opponent's touchdown right away. And this is the definition of a poor assignment. Look at the fullback inside. Look at the eyes. Somebody has to get to the outside for the quarterback. Pat White, once he pulls the ball, they're indecisive. You can't have one linebacker trying to cover a quarterback and the option back. You have to play downfield with great assignment discipline. That was Jeremy Navarre, the defensive end, who got fooled a bit. And you see Jordan Steffi in his center, Mike Dent practicing the snap. They'll be back on the field momentarily. This is Terrell Skinner for the Terrapins, who's rocked short of the 25-yard line. We mentioned that he's an emotional guy, Steffi. He's played a little bit of football. He's had an interesting, tough career, overcome some adversity, but as a starter, this Doug is by far his biggest moment. You know, he has to come out. I, I would give him a running play for the quarterback, whether it's a bootleg or a draw or something to get him hit and into the flow of the game and bring him down, calm him down a little bit. He told Coach Friedgen last year in the game, hey, Coach, let's get me in this game. He needs it. A solid physical setback. Keon Lattimore is behind Steffi. This time they do execute the snap, and Steffi rolls, has a man. It's complete over the middle. Dan Gronkowski. The junior tight end with the catch up near the 40-yard line. Gain of 12, and here's Pat White. To introduce you to our uh, Steve Slayton. Introduce you to the defense. Starting front three for the D-line. We got my man Johnny Dingle from Miami. I call him Dingle Rally. Linebacking core. We got my man Mark Medgro. Plays like he's from the 1950s. He's a get after you player. In the secondary, we got my man 12 Arms, Eric Wicks, and the new guy for us, Ryan Mundy. That's 22 on the dot there. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the clock in his head like any good quarterback. And up inside. Lattimore short gain near the 45. Morty Ivy on the stop. 96 Dykes nose tackle. Kind of a game time decision guy, but a very important cog in the middle of this defense. He was questionable whether he played Doug, but it's important to have him in there, especially at that position in this 3-3-5. He's their run stopper, and he is their leader in the defensive front. No doubt about it. He's got a sprained foot. Looks like he's good to go in there, and that's a relief so far for West Virginia fans. Lattimore in the eye formation behind Corey Jackson, the fullback, on second and six. Gets it. Little push on the left side. And Lattimore first down across midfield. That's that physical running game that Freegen wants to get going to settle down his quarterback. 
Very, very nice start. They ran a bootleg on the first play to stretch defense, make them stay home, and now two consecutive runs, gashing them, opening the holes, time of possession. Dykes, 96, in the middle of that nose tackle, about three or four yards deep, blown out that time. So maybe they're going to go after Dykes, knowing that he's a little suspect with his body. We've already seen that Maryland needs time of possession tonight. Their first possession was four seconds with the fumble snap. They'd like a long march here. It's a low shotgun snap, some miscommunication, and dropped for a loss is Lattimore. Scooter Berry, the freshman defensive end, off the edge. This all goes back to what you alluded to, Chris, in the open. It's a home game, a lot of enthusiasm. You watched the team. We all saw them come out of the tunnel. They sprinted 120 yards. We said, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't sell out on that. Well, I'll tell you, if, if you come out in pregame, it's one of these big hype games. I'd spend all my energy in pregame, so I come down to a late even keel. Not me. I oh. save my energy. <laughs> I needs it. I don't you didn't need it at quarterback. You just stand there. Passing situation for Steffi and West Virginia shows blitz. They do bring pressure. Steffi keeps it up the middle, but gets back just in the original line of scrimmage at the 49. Dykes again playing in a bum foot active. I think it's important to let Steffi carry the ball a little bit early like that. Take a few hits. Like I said, that helps you calm down and get into the rhythm of the game. Because if you are a drop back guy, you get through the whole first quarter without breaking a sweat. He's getting into the game now. Uh, and their offensive linemen up front, they want the line to have the shoulders, the, the, the load on their shoulders. 63 right guard. Andrew Crummy, he's one of those guys saying, let's put it on our shoulders and go with it. Lattimore in the backfield, three receivers for Steffi on third and nine. Fires over the middle, caught for a first down. Darius Hayward Bay breaking free. Three yards. That'll help the QB's confidence as he uses the go-to receiver. And there's Ray Lewis. Yeah, good vision there. Hayward Gray coming in from the left side. Watch how he settles into the pocket. You see the settling effect, which allows the target to happen. Great job of sitting down in a zone. Great job of stepping up by the quarterback and sticking on a little high on the throw. Nice grab, brings it down. Now he becomes a runner. After the fumble snap to open the game, Steffi's two for two for 45 yards. Hayward Bay in motion. High formation handoff to Lattimore. Good blocking on the edge, and Lattimore for about eight. Four set of bounds by Antonio Lewis. Jamie Thomas, that guard, and the fullback Jackson. Some nice blocks over there. I don't think anybody questions Maryland's ability to play well. They came back last season, had a nice second half of the year, and yep. you, know, you called the game last year where they got routed. It's just a matter of composure. West Virginia is used to playing in big games, Doug. Right, and that's what we saw in the first snap was the fumble. You stay away from those mistakes if you're Maryland and you can stay in the game. They can run the ball. Obviously, they can throw the ball, too, now. Just don't make the big mistakes. This is play eight in this good-looking drive, second and three. Lattimore cuts it back, tries to get the outside, a stiff arm, but can't get away from Antonio Lewis. Lewis, a very speedy cover corner, and he's up there forcing Lattimore out of bounds for a slight loss. To this point in the season, we've been watching defenses around the country trying to figure out who has a championship-type defense. West Virginia, we don't know that yet. You know, you, we want to see speed, and we want to see togetherness. You ask Maryland's offensive line if that 3-3-5 is a little soft, and they unanimously said no. It's a downhill physical defense. But what it does, more than anything, it, it can confuse an offensive line. If you know your assignments against it, then you can run the football on it. Three tight end look with Hayward Bay in motion on third and two. Pure power football, and Lattimore cuts it for a first down inside the five. This is what those Maryland offensive linemen and Andrew Crummy, the ringleader, this is what they said they wanted to do. <laughs> Any offensive lineman <laughs> wants this. That's what they beg for every week, no matter what level you're at. 63. They want to run the ball. <laughs> the push by 63 on Dykes. He's pushing the pile. They're up front moving it. Crummy was intense in our meetings. Now, I'm telling you, you didn't want to ask a negative question to the guy. <laughs> Very have, smart guy, though, too. Yeah. You're afraid of a college kid, huh? Absolutely. On 
first and goal. Lattimore wants to throw it lefty. Lobs it in the end zone incomplete over the head of Gronkowski. Now they get tricky down here on first and goal. What? What do they think they're in Canada? <laughs> they threw that football too far. <laughs> well, he had a guy in his face. He did the smart thing, put it up over the top in a safe spot. But you're right, Chris. There's no need to take a risk yet. I mean, you save that for when a situation. They're pounding the football I, I, right now. I'm going to take the other side. Ralph Regan now. He's got a defense pin in their ears back, and it was open. It, it was, was a open. Bad pass, and he did not okay. throw the ball on time. Or it's a touchdown. I'll give you that. I hope he throws it better in practice. <laughs> Now Lattimore after the incompletion, the lone setback. Laquan Williams in motion. Lattimore's got it. Cuts it back. To the goal line. Touchdown, Terrapins. tricky there just power of football and Maryland atones for the mistake and answers the Mountaineers touchdown. Obi Egekezi first year picker handling the snap good job there is Matt Goldberg 75 yards in 11 plays and Ray Lewis nicked up a bit for the Ravens comes down the highway and watches Maryland tie it at seven. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood, and in part by The Accord, Beyond the Road, all new from Honda. Get a little feast out here. It's a short road trip for the West Virginia faithful. We're going to cut these up and have some nice cheese steaks, even though uh, we're here in Maryland. The only thing we're missing is a little crab. Crab cakes little there. Little spices on the steaks. Nice little sizzle. Good walking. Smell it. Where are the crab cakes, Craig? Did you eat them all last night? <laughs> hey, that's what we do in Maryland. That's right. Uh, uh, crab cakes and football. That's what Maryland does, baby. That's your, okay, that's your one movie it. line out of uh, <laughs> The Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers. All right. boy. <laughs> Jumbo lump. No filler, all right? That would have cost you 38 bucks yeah, a year. They're, they're about 30 bucks a piece, but they're, they're pretty good. <laughs> Chris Roberts, the junior, to kick off for Maryland. The deep man is Noel Devine, the super recruited running back. The next Steve Slate has made an impact this year already. Devine very quick. Be careful with this guy. Slips a couple tackles, gets out near the 35 yard line. Go back and take a look at the touchdown. Now, Lattimore did a nice job of running, but this really all starts up front. Want to watch these two tight ends over here. Watch the execution of the down block, and the linebackers cannot get off those two tight ends inside execution the, by the, the offensive The down line. block created so much space that the linebackers trying to fill, they can't win. There's too much space. The, the linemen get up on them, make a miss, get the end zone. Too many longs on the field out there. <laughs> That's a good drive for Lattimore. He had 29 yards and seven carries. And the four-yard touchdown. So Maryland answers after the early miscue. The conference for the officials on the sidelines now. This is a Big East officiating crew. Replay equipment has been fixed. Didn't know it was broken, but thank you. <laughs> Nothing worth the replay so far, thankfully. Slayton to the left of Pat White. White, first pass attempt of the evening, fires complete to Tito Gonzalez, the junior from Tampa. And Slayton introduces you to his offensive teammates. Starting with the Fab Five, we have the left tackle Ryan Stanchek on the dancing man. We got Ryan the point, quarterback number five, Pat White, and makes it happen. Number two, we're receiver, Derek Raynaud from Louisiana, and gets busy. It's tough when you can throw in first down and pick up eight yards. Formation, they pitch it. Slayton can't get the corner, but does get the first down between Moses Foku there on the tackle. The preseason All American Aaron Henderson introduces you to his defensive teammates. Up front, we got our space eaters Dre Moore, Carlos Feliciano, 
the linebacker core along with myself. We got Moses from Fruit Foku, uh, Dave Magic Philistine. The secondary, we got Kevin Barnes, a.k.a. Deuce, Z Gardner, number five on the other side. Henderson, the sophomore little brother of Butkus and Bednarik Award winner E.J. Henderson, now with the Vikings. In motion is Slayton, but this is big. Owen Schmidt with the fake, and Slayton with a running start gets the pitch down inside the 40. But for a second, Schmidt had the football, and so did the defense. And again, it's assignment football. When you're running the option, everybody wants to take the dive away, but at some point, you have to be spread out. You see Slayton start in the slot, goes to the top of the field. They're out of position. There's no chance. Look at that gap. You can't play like that. Those defensive ends for the Terrapins having a tough evening so far. They've been fooled a few times. First down. A fumble by White, who picks it up and has the quickness to turn it into a short game. You know, you talk about guys being out of position. I think it's Pat White making his reads correctly. He sees the end or tackle, whoever he's reading on the particular play, crash down. Then he pulls it out. The option's the outside guy, and the safety's going to have to come all the way up the field to get to the back. It's option football. It's and on. you have to play assignment defensive football, and you have to be physical with it. And second and eight. And a down and complete. Ran out the intended receiver. He's a guy that defenses have to be very aware of this year. Everybody talks about White and Slayton. Raynard in number two. Leading receiver with 14 catches is a dangerous guy as well. He looks like a running back when the ball's in his hands. No tight end, two backs, three receivers on third and eight. Maryland students making a lot of noise at this end. White fires short, caught. Slayton has root, has a first down inside the 30. Fourth catch of the year for Slayton. Dave Philistine, the middle backer, hauls him down. Formation changes, trying to keep a defensive coordinator from really pinning their ears back on Slayton. We've seen Slayton far wide left. Here we are. He's out wide right now, Doug. So you're able to get him with that bubble screen over there. Watch the right guard and right tackle. Release and get out in front. West Virginia has athletic offensive line. That's the key to the offense, isn't it? Quick guys up front and in the backfield. White fakes a pass. Now does fire to Raynaud. Makes a little move and gets hammered inside the 25. Defense does a good job, and it's still a positive play. They still pick up five. The coaching staff, both teams, really were concerned with how they prepared their ball clubs for this Thursday night game. They're tired. Their teams were tired. West Virginia had two physical practices. Maryland had one physical practice, but Friedgen was a little concerned that maybe his guys, Doug, were gassed. Oh, they're kids. Come on. They're between 18 and 21. They could go all night. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> good. They've recovered. This is the emotion right now. Fourth quarter, we'll see how tired people are. Second and five. This is Schmidt banging ahead. The X walk on. X Wisconsin River Falls fullback. A flag in the play. Did I hear River Falls? Little, Wisconsin little River Falls. Falls. There you yeah. go, Division Three. Yeah. Yeah, a little transfer over. Well, Schmidt <laughs> sent out tapes to big schools when he came to my high school. They said no thanks. Headed to Wisconsin, then walked on here, and he's become a star. Illegal formation. The offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. Schmidt's a great story. I mean, the guy is a freak of nature. How strong he is. 525 pound power clean. How about the Mohawk going there? Huh? Yeah, how is that about like it? A guy? Now, how would you like to be a linebacker <laughs> and seeing that coming at you, boss? That's a tough look, man. Mom, okay. I'm coming home. 525 power clean. That's pretty good, huh? That's off the charts. I've never heard of that. Never. That's 500 mean, pounds? What? You go down and lift it to your, your chest, not over your head. I, I would be there next. I, I would just be clapping in the weight room. But he did put 400 plus over his head one time to finish it off. You said he's freaky strong. After the penalty at second and ten. Schmidt gives it to Slayton. Blocked from White, but too much traffic. Dre Moore in the corner. Isaiah Gardner were there. Maryland trying to rip the football out of Slayton's hands. No, oh, well schooled that time. Great job staying home by the Maryland defense. Not fooled on the play, not over pursuing, sitting back. Pat White even tried to throw a block on that play, by the way. And, and Rich Rodriguez is so good with his mind. The next time that you see that coming around, don't be surprised to see Slayton pull up and throw the ball down the field. 
They converted on third and long before with Slayton as a receiver. Now Slayton's in the slot to the left on third and 13. Again, White has trouble with the snap and has to take the loss. Second time tonight, Doug, he's bottled that shotgun snap. Yeah, a lot of times that happens when you're taking your eye off the ball to either check a coverage, a blitz, or you want to get rid of the ball quickly and you, you just take your eye off the snap a little bit. You know, we all know how great an athlete Pat White is. That shouldn't happen. Now, Pat McAfee is both the punter and the field goal kicker, but the penalty and the loss move him back out of range. And now McAfee will try to pooch it down there. A very low line drive punt bounces. And a good job by the Terrapin or the Mountaineers coverage team. Larry Williams pins Maryland back at the one yard line. And the big story in the Maryland campus a noose was found hanging from a tree last Thursday outside the Black Cultural Center, investigated by campus police and the FBI as a hate crime. As you can imagine, the reaction on campus has been shock over the last week. They have so many multicultural events and so many different people from different places that for somebody to um, think that this was okay and acceptable on a college campus such as Maryland and such a, um, a well-known campus is just, is just, is disheartening. So Maryland, after an 11 plays, 75 yard drive, tied the score, makes a stand on defense, but now very, very tricky field position at the three. Two extremes. Steffi fumbling the snap in the first play from scrimmage. But the next possession, a very poised march. High formation, Hayward Bay in motion. Lattimore is the setback, and he gets the call. Give it to the steady senior down there inside the five, but he gets just a yard. Well, this gives you a chance for time of possession. <laughs> <laughs> Drive that thing 90-something yards here. I wouldn't be surprised to go play action and just lay one up to Darius and let, let him just go up and make a play exactly. for you down the field. Doug, you can't. You, you, you're going to have to beat West Virginia. You just can't sit back there and think you're going to play, you know, time of possession, field, and everything. you got to go you down gotta the field got to make a it. shot. You can be cautious, but if you punt the ball back to him and give it to you at the plus 45, you're in trouble anyway. Again, it's Hayward Bay motion at the top of the screen. They give it to Lattimore again. It'll stutter step, and he gets around the corner near the first down marker. Malik, the safety, there to force him out. They're going to mark it at the 18. Should be good for a very important Maryland first down. The offensive line for Maryland showed up tonight, guys. They're out there playing. 76 comes around the corner, and Jamie Thomas just absolutely led him to a first down. They closed down the whole corner, bounced outside. Uh, to run the ball, two runs in a row off your own goal line and pick up a first down is huge. To be 340 and be in motion and make it a block, that's impressive. And scary if you're a corner. <laughs> Hayward Bay in the slot. Do they trust Steffi to throw it down here? Yes, play action, steps up away from pressure, flips it short, and it's caught. Corey Jackson, the fullback. Not a first down, but picks up eight. First down throw. Great poise by Steffi. Stepping up inside the block. A little bit of pressure steps up. Nice, calm, relaxed, complete. Ralph Friedgen said there's never any question about whether or not Steffi knows where the ball should go. Sometimes he studies it and he makes a quick decision and gets off a receiver. Underneath, though, the underneath game is always on time. So yeah. Part of that, part of that is slowing yourself down to the pace of the game and not getting sped up. The third start in Steffi's career, but the first real quality opponent that he's faced. Lattimore, cuts left. Maryland uses a rotating tailback system. We'll see Lance Ball the next couple of series. Lattimore goes two series. Then his fellow senior Lance Ball, then Lattimore comes back, although Friedgen has said he wants to get to a system, Craig. And you know something about tailback rotations, I think, where the hot hand gets more of the action. Two series to me is a long time to sit out. I like the every other series deal. And then, you know, if you go three plays and out, then maybe you go right back. But you got to really monitor it from the sidelines. Otherwise, the a back on the sidelines, it's crystallized. Yeah, but he's also trying to let one guy get into the flow. I'm sure if they break a long run, he may come out. The idea is keep a fresh guy in there. Crystallized? Uh, you know, you get stoved up. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> Low snap. Lattimore takes a handoff and muscles ahead across the 30. Crystallized. Uh, you know, you know, you know what it's like uh, when you get like open a, a, a jar of, uh, of jelly or something. You know, it's uh, you crystallize. You know, if you let it sit there long enough, it's going to crystallize. You can take that in chemistry. Yeah, I'm old, so when I get to that point, it's rigor mortis just setting in on you. <laughs> Uh, I never heard that word described for the state of sitting on the bench. There. I'll tell you what, Lattimore has been anything but crystallized. Very busy, 11 carries already for 49 yards. Different look now on second and two. Steph, he's a good runner. Can't get away, though. Making the stop was Morty Ivy. Near a first down mark. Might require a measurement. Steffi shows great feet here. A lot of quickness there. You know, I think he's quicker than he is fast. He's probably about a 4 6 guy, but his quickness with his feet, his ability to cut lateral is excellent. No measurement. It's a Maryland first down. Now to Aaron Andrews. Chris, just to revisit the situation that you spoke about with a potential possible hate crime last week, there was a gathering this past Tuesday with several hundred students that got together and just expressed their emotions about the discovery of the news. Maryland's president, C.D. Moe Jr., also released two emails this week saying, university would not tolerate a situation like this, as well as the fact that an investigation is going on. And they, they promised us swift justice, Aaron, if anybody was found to be guilty of that hate crime. Chris, they certainly did. And to add on that, his second email mentioned the fact that no suspects have been identified in the investigation yet, and it will continue. I spoke with linebacker Aaron Henderson this week about the situation. He said he was in complete disbelief, very surprised. He had no idea, never really figured out why it would happen on this particular ca campus. He said it won't affect the campus's mood, and it's not something you would see here. And a lot of students share that stunned reaction of Henderson. Aaron, thank you. After the loss, second and 13. They'll run it with Lattimore one more time. Again, he cuts free. Key on Lattimore, first down. A flag comes in very late. It's in the holding zone, well after Lattimore had gotten past the line of scrimmage. Craig, I thought he made a bad cut at the line of scrimmage initially, but he just made a guy miss in the hole, an unblocked defender, and burst it up through there, obviously, flag on the play. His figure is to negate what would have been a first down. Or two fouls on the play, holding the defense, offense, face mask, the defense. Those penalties offset, replay second down. What's happening here, though, the reason that you see it, that you think there's a bad cut, he can get away with it because the offensive line's blowing him off up front. I mean, this offensive line is dominating the middle, specifically the nose tackle, getting no push, no drive, no pursuit from the defensive line. Dyke's in the middle of the field. He's got a lot on his shoulders. You know, they said they'd try to rotate in and out if he couldn't do it. I just don't think he's got his feet under him tonight. This is a defense that was very good against the run against Western Michigan and Marshall the first two games of Maryland obviously a little more imposing running game to deal with. Mountaineers have been burned by the pass so far this year. That's been the weakness in defense coming into this game. And Steffi will pass on second and long fires complete to Isaiah Williams. The junior from Montclair, New Jersey, Von Rivers, forces him out. You like that arm from Stephanie? Long throw there. I liked it. Does just, a, just a little curl route right out on the outside. And he just, what, what is impressing me is his poise in the pocket. He didn't rush the throw, took his time, delivered the ball with a, an accurate on-time throw. Chris, you think Ralph Friedgen would be pleased with a 7-7 score at the end of the first quarter, considering how he started out? <laughs> A lot of us would be pleased if it's not 28 nothing after the first quarter as it was last year. He third down, play third and three. Mountaineers show pressure. Steffi again steps up. Will not get the first down. Morty Ivy was the middle linebacker there to hold up Steffi and his teammates were quick to fill. Terrapins off the punt. Not sure that's the play out of putting the ball in the hands of from offensive line going like it has been uh, between the tackles. Now they want to use Steffi as a runner, though. That's one of his yeah. attributes. Let's do that on first coach. and ten, coach. And when Third you do, two, let's give it to a ball carrier. Yeah. 
When you do use the quarterback as a runner, though, you can block everybody on the field. It's the extra guy. Instead of handing the ball off, now he's carrying it. You have an opportunity to block everybody. You know, Josh Portis is a great athlete. He's been suspended for the year. Academic integrity violation. Cheating on a quiz reportedly. So the job belongs to Steffi. Portis is the kind of athlete that could make that play work. Instead, Terrapins must punt, but yes, a much better start than this border feud produced last year. 7-7 after 15 in College Park. It's the first punt for Maryland. Travis Ball, it's a true freshman, filling in for a four-year starter. It was drafted in the fourth round by the Jaguars. Adam Podlesh, good start to his career so far. Maryland hasn't had a punt block since 99. A streak of 87 games, good protection there. And Vaughn Rivers calls for a, thought he called for a fair catch. Now he decides to run it across the 20. I thought he saw his arm shoot up there. They were getting a little close there, and that ball dropped. It never turned over, so those are a little tricky to catch. Good coverage by the Terrapins. Well, what's going to happen to the big house? Which powerhouse program is going to lose for a fifth straight time? Who's going to drop to 0-3? Which freshman quarterback? Mallet or Clawson will play well. ABC. Folks have different reasons to watch Notre Dame and Michigan on Saturday, don't well, they? Well, we just know that a freshman quarterback will be the winning quarterback. And probably the losing quarterback. How about and only... one of those teams is going to be 0-3? I'm going to ask you guys later on tonight which team you think has more riding on that battle of 0 2 teams. Mountaineers with their 22. Slayton, nowhere to run. Carlos Feliciano, the tackle, and Navarre holding their ground on that right side. Spoke to John Tenuta, defensive coordinator at Georgia Tech today, who's had to defend this West Virginia offense before. And John just said simply, man, you play seven men. You have to force Pat White to throw the football. If you load up in there, you're really hurting yourself. No doubt about it. You just can't watch White and Slayton run down the field with the ball. Make them throw it. White, nowhere to run, and there's Aaron Henderson on the tackle. The preseason All-American on pace to have the kind of career that his big brother EJ did, leading tackler on this team. Did you see how he tackled Chris? Did you see him come down the hill? He went and got Pat White. You don't wait on Pat White to come get you. Number one, Henderson comes and gets White. See him come down the hill? And wraps him up, gets the arms around him. And they did it with seven in the box that time. And a tackle that Ray Lewis would appreciate. Yeah, buddy. Third and 11. Five receivers set wide for White. They rush four. White, plenty of time. Fires almost intercepted. Threw it into traffic, and Kevin Barnes was defending, and a flag comes out. Darrell, Darrell Jalla was the receiver. Did Barnes get there too soon? Looked like he went through the receiver. Pass interference on the defense. The first down is by the foul. He, but he, he was, was in great, ball, he he was was in great position, but he did go through the, the receiver and created the contact. So you got to give the receiver a chance to catch the ball. But he was in great position. Both Barnes and Gardner and are excellent, excellent corners. <laughs> He went through the shoulder. He was in a great position to make a play. First down after the penalty. Slayton's got it. Cuts back. Very quick 10 yards. Trey Covington on the tackle. Now flags flying in after the tackle. We wondered if this might be a chippy game. No history of that, but West Virginia has dominated. Nobody on this Maryland team has, has beaten them unless they were redshirt freshmen four years ago. Dead ball foul. 62 on the offense. That's 
the tackle Ryan Stanchek back about 15 yards Aaron as we've been talking about how this Maryland defense is fired up on Monday when they got into the locker room there were copies of Steve Slayton Sports Illustrated cover all over their stalls also magazines with Pat White and Owen Schmidt everywhere Aaron Henderson told me I just threw mine out he said last year's first quarter motivation enough for us if that isn't for you then don't bother suiting up tonight Lots of reasons for inspiration. Again, they do a decent job filling, but the speed of Slayton earns him seven yards. Let's go back to Reese Davis for a 30 at 30 update. Reese. All right, Chris, punishment for the Patriots spyware scandal just handed down by the NFL. Head coach Bill Belichick will be personally fined half a million dollars and the team fined $250,000 for videotaping opponent signals. And if the Patriots make the playoffs as anticipated, they will forfeit a first round draft pick in the 2008 draft. Number one overall pick in the 2007 NBA draft, Greg Oden is going to miss the entire season after having microfracture surgery on his right knee. Sports Center after the game, you can stay current with ESPN News. Reese, thank you. That was big. Owen oh, Schmidt rumbling right up the middle of the field, down inside the 25-yard line, 44 yards. Yeah, but look at the lane assignment here. You got to get people inside. Nobody's on the fullback. You got to stop the fullback dive. The, the last time we showed the replay, though, we closed down on the fullback, and White pulled it. So it's a matter of reading the defense. You got to stop the fullback first and foremost. He's a guy. The next walk-on is an NFL future 250, running like that. The tremendous strength that you talked about earlier, Craig. Slayton explodes inside the five and slams down to the two. You want to talk about a hole a mile wide. Look at this one. It's and all of this, all of this is reading the defense and making the correct read as a quarterback and giving it to the right guy. Uh, it doesn't hurt when you have a line match hats. You spread the defense out. And Maryland right now is having to cover 52 yards out there. Now, how long wide the field is, Doug? 52. 53. It's 50. I'm just making sure you knew. I had a coach. That's right. It's 65, he walked it all. 65 in Canada. Yeah. How about 63 about yards in those two running plays? Suddenly, Mountaineers had the momentum and a first and goal. Right out in the slot, Schmidt next to White. White shoved wide and dropped for a loss. Frost putting the chill on that play. Huge play for the Terrapin defense. It's back at the eight now. Two tights. You're assuming short yardage goal line that you're not going to have somebody come clean, but you're getting beat up front. Manhandled. You're using your fullback as a fullback. The two tights is your tight end, and Pat Wade is now your tailback. It's a two back, a regular two back run. Slayton back in the game now to the left of White. Darius Raynaud in the slot. Schmidt goes nowhere, loses his helmet, and is ganged up on at the eight. Dre Moore, the defensive tackle, the senior from Charlotte, knocked off the hat and exposed the mohawk there. No problem. Put that helmet back on. If anybody loses the helmet, it probably would be okay in a football game. It would be Schmidt. Well, he's used to breaking face masks, right? That's he's his got eight. Up. He has eight now that he's busted up. But you talk about, that. hey, that's off the charts, folks. Didn't help Mayor though. Maryland had a lot of strong guys in the neighborhood. And from first and goal inside the five, two successful plays sets up third and goal at the eight. White hands to Slayton. Just back to the five. Feliciano there on the tackle. Senior out of Jersey. White, a critical series for Maryland's defense after those two huge plays set the Mountaineers up inside the five. Well, that's a situation where it's third and long, and Pat White has to be a passing quarterback. Spread the field, a legitimate route. Instead, they go to their option run game and don't get it done. This is the first field goal attempt of the season for Pat McAfee. 22 yards. First attempt is unsuccessful. Rodriguez's team comes up empty after a long drive. Maryland gets momentum back in a 7-7 game. 
We've already shown you superstar Ray Lewis here to watch this ball game. We'll talk to him when we come back to College Park. Maryland trying for a real state mark landmark win here 7 7 in the second quarter a disastrous start for the Terrapins with the turnover on their first play they steady themselves and now Lance Ball taking his turn to the backfield behind Steffi first carry of the night for the other senior in the tailback rotation short game now you've seen Ray Lewis on the sideline of course the great from the Baltimore Ravens and his Nat brother Kian Latimer running well so far. Ray, you said we. Now, is it? Are you embracing the Terrapins as as your your college team right now? Well, I'm embracing them right now. Yeah, because my, my I mean my blood is over there, <laughs> so I have to. And yeah, my little brother's doing a great job. He's running the ball very hard. But I'm a Terrapin tonight. Now, what would you say to this Maryland defense against all that speed on the West Virginia side, and having to be disciplined and, and know their reads? Yeah, you know, actually, I would tell them to make sure they take one play at a time. And it's a very complicated offense to deal with. You know, even in the National Football League, you know, dealing with Vince Young in Tennessee, they run the same package. But when you have it in college, you know, you just really have to take your time, slow down, and just take one play at a time. And they should have great success. You talk to Keon. How, how does he like that that tailback rotation where he's in there for two series and he's out of there for two series? Right now it's ball. Well, yeah, you know what? I think it's it's always tough because you know he's the type of back that, that wants to touch the ball 25, 30 times. You know, but you know, I mean, we understand the rotation things that goes on in college. You know, and he's only preparing himself for the next level. So, like I told him, understanding what's going on because you never know what's going on. But he understands what sharing time means. You know, and I, I think he's making the best of it. Third down for Steffi and company at the 22 yard line. And cover three. Get out route. Get out route. Throw your ball. Throw the out route. You heard Ray Lewis say throw the out route. Doug, was it there? Was that, was that a good read? It was down, uh, down the bottom. It down was. the bottom of the down screen. The bottom of the screen. Yeah, yeah, I got you, Ray. Out, I got you. Wait a, Wait a minute, Ray. One on one on the outside. <laughs> bottom of your screen. How do you have a screen down there? <laughs> I don't have a screen, but I can see the safety <laughs> rotate over. <laughs> That's right. Read the rotation. The safeties never lie. Corners always lie. Hey, safeties Ray. never lie. Corners always lie. Ray, let me ask you this. If you were the defensive coordinator at, at Maryland tonight, and y'all trying to go against this zone read quarterback, how would you defend? It. Well, you know, the, the thing you don't want to do is just sit back and wait on them or, or because they dictate them. I think you're going to really have to come after them to get them off of their edge. You know, if you let Slayton control the game the way he's controlling the game so far, it's going to be a long night. So bottom line is I think I would blitz them and make, a, a, you know, a, a outside uh, players show me that they're going to throw the ball uh, way more than they're going to run this option. Juan Rivers with a return up near the 48-yard line. Ray. You got nicked up in the opening game. What's your status for uh, Sunday's game against the Jets? Oh man, I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. You know, <laughs> it was a scare. It was a scare uh, back then. But I tell you, once I got through that game, I, I, I truly understood that you know it was just a tear. I had an MRI. You know, I mean, there's no surgery required, anything like that. So I'm ready for the Jets. I'm excited. You know, we got off to a bad start. You know, we don't want that many turnovers in the opener. You know, but I think we got some good things going. So I'm excited to play for the Jets. I mean, play against the Jets this week. Yeah, we had talked to Chad Johnson before the game last week and he said if they get that win that means they got the division now you're not willing to concede the division after one game are you I, I tell you what now if, if he believes that then he, he don't forgot about the rest of the 15 games we have to play hey Ray many years ago you're a young guy playing at Florida State you told Fowler and me that you're going to be the best linebacker that Miami ever had come through there I remember that yeah. I remember that yeah prophetic my man I remember what, that I what are your feelings that. about the Orange Bowl going down I, I, now, I, I'm, I'm hurting about that one now I'm serious I'm hurt about that because I that's just a stadium you don't take down for nothing. A lot of great memories in the whole horseshoe in Little Havana. First down. For the Mountaineers at the 22. White will fire on first down, completes it to Reynard who slips a tackle and gets up near the first down yardage at the 32. 
Tough loss for the Canes, Ray. I'm sure you're aware they went to Oklahoma, and, and Oklahoma made Miami look not very fast. What wow. about the Canes in 07, and can they regroup? Yeah, no, I, I, I truly believe they can. But you know what? It looks like it's going to be a couple of years. You know, the, the camaraderie has to come back there. You know, and when I, we saw that Oklahoma game, I'm like, wow, oh, is Oklahoma that good, or, or we took that big a fall? And it kind of looked like we took that big a fall. So Randy's going to get the program right. You know, he's going to get the players in the right positions to make plays, and we're going to go on from there. We'll be back, though. We'll be back. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> was the reaction, the speed of Slayton there? What was the on the field, oh, my goodness, from Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. You got to stop him early. You got to stop him early. Don't let him get started. <laughs> You're going to be tackling this guy number 10 pretty soon in the NFL, whether it's next year or the year after that. Well, you know, you can also phrase that differently. He's going to be running from me right here. So. <laughs> or you might be missing him. Is that what's going on? <laughs> White still got it. Henderson wraps him up, but he should have a first out of the 43. Hey, Ray, this Owen Schmidt fullback at West Virginia, 525-pound power clean. Wow. <laughs> Number 35? Yeah, have you ever heard of somebody power cleaning 525 pounds? Not in my life. <laughs> wow. He's messed up eight different face masks in his career. For, what, just hitting people? Just hitting people, yeah. blowing them up, bending masks, have to take them off. Well, he's mad at somebody. See, he's probably mad at somebody. <laughs> Hey, Ray, thanks for taking time. We appreciate it. Best of luck Sunday against the Jets. Hey, man, thank you guys, bud. All right, see you, Ray. All right, man. Fun to have Ray join us. He He's loves good. his football. He was into it down there. He was. Uh, making the reads for the quarterback. Oh, yeah. He, well, he knows coverage. He knows rotation. <laughs> he knows where the ball should go. And to be a coach in these positions. He knows the weakness of a defense right. as well. No weakness from Dre Moore. Good stop. Maryland has done a good job creating negative running plays for West Virginia. That's the sixth loss they've taken in a running play. They've also given up some big plays. They're playing up the field. They're playing on the other side side. Gonna say, does that make them vulnerable for a pass play? That one thrown behind Raynaud off his hands. Looks to me like the safeties are playing a little tighter for run support off of that option look. The last time West Virginia ran the option, the, the, the fullback was covered, the, the quarterback had a guy responsible for him, and the pitch back was covered. So they're bringing the extra guy up there and putting the pressure on the secondary. Well, we said it earlier. You would want, Maryland's defense would want to have Pat White have to beat him. <laughs> Good bizarre. Here's the reaction. reaction there. Now, he wants to make the play. Now, it's be a big reaction from everybody if they can stop him on third and 11. Pump fake to Raynard. Short goes deep. Has a man a double move and Raynard hauls it in. White kind of faked it to him and they sneak Raynard out and Anthony Wiseman didn't stay with him. I talked with defensive back coach Kevin Lempa of the Maryland Terrapins. He said we have to stop the wheel route. The out and up by the second receiver. That's it's Raynard wheel right route. there. And he's going to go to the out and then he's going to get back up the field but it's all a matter because they moved the pocket that Pump faked it in there too. he yeah. has time to get the route developed I mean, it's a long developing route. It's one thing to know it's coming, it's another thing to stop it. Raynaud already three catches, gives him 17 on the year. 35 yards on the biggest pass play of the night for White. It's not just White and Slayton, number two has become a real threat in his senior year. They go back to Slayton, has the sidelines and score. <laughs> He's got big time speed, Ray. <laughs> 22 yards just like that from third and 11 a minute ago. Mountaineers convert and now score. Watch the arm tackle inside out. Lineman can't deal with it. Run past arm tackles. If you've got that speed, run past the arm tackle. Schmidt is fullback, getting upfield, making a nice block, made it look easy. Pat McAfee for the conversion. 78 yards in seven plays. They do it in 218 as the Mountaineers jump in front 14-7. ESPN's College Football Prime Time. Brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. And Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at NBUSA.com. 
Now Steve Slayton's 44th career touchdown against his school that he is very motivated again. Slayton out of Pennsylvania. Had a scholarship offer was taken away by Maryland. We found out from a reporter in a phone conversation. Most schools wanted him to play defensive back anyway. But a pretty good running back. Well, Ralph Friedman just said, "Hey, I had too many guys here, yeah. when I, and I had to, you know, give it up." You know, he admits he messed up. Every coach has those mess ups on his resume. And he said he's got the Slayton rule now. Basically, <laughs> he says if you get a guy who's really fast and who's really good in the classroom, you take him. You know, he learned a lesson there, and you know, sometimes you get lucky. You can't have enough good kids, like, enough good character type players. You can't have enough guys who run four three either. <laughs> See the is West Virginia five yard penalty from the previous spot to kick. I know what he was thinking. I know he wanted to have some defensive backs that when they intercept the ball can take it to the house. Yep. So four times a year he'll get to touch the ball. But don't you think that Rich Rodriguez? I know, I know you're him? kidding there, Dad. I know yeah. you're kidding. Rodriguez get that guy the rock. <laughs> sends a Christmas present to <laughs> Ralph every year, saying, "Hey, buddy, thanks for pulling that scholarship off the table." Now he's glad they don't play next year. This is the last meeting until 2010. It's been 27 uninterrupted years. McAfee's kick out of bounds gave Maryland the option. They chose to have him re-kick it from the 25. Well, that's a big number right there. So if you're a Maryland Terrapin defensive guy, you better go into the halftime, get you good soda water, and get your horse cinched up tighter because the second half Slayton shows up. Well, he did against Marshall last week. You realize West Virginia had 316 yards rushing in the second half. 199 in the fourth quarter, rushing in one quarter. McAfee boots it along the ground. Maryland should get pretty good field position. Nolan Carroll muscles up near the 40. So Maryland answered before when West Virginia scored. Can they do it again? 14 7 as we approach halftime in College Park. greatest players in college football history presented by IBM starting this Saturday IBM getting it done we'll count down 25 to 1 throughout the season voted on by a panel of former coaches former players media members I hope at least one of us in this booth makes that list congratulations <laughs> nobody asked me Doug would you be on the list Play action fake to Paul. They throw it instead of the fullback Jackson. Short completion. You guys ready for the Affleck trivia question? Notre Dame and Michigan facing each other in the big house Saturday, both at 0-2. When was the last time both of these traditional powerhouses had losing seasons? Now, long way to go for them to have losing seasons. The last together time, yeah, at the, the both, same time. Yeah, the last time that both of them together had losing seasons. Don't answer. Let, let, let me think in case you know it. <laughs> Yeah, I Just know. in case. Did I look like I was getting ready to be a Vern? Jump out there on you? No. <laughs> but I thought maybe you paid attention to the production meeting. Ball <laughs> on the cutback. Barrels up near midfield. Has a first down. <laughs> that's, that's a dangerous assumption because there was food involved in our meeting today. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ball goes about 225. He's at a T neck to Jersey. About the same size as, as Keon Lattimore. A similar style runner. It's, he's got great feet for a guy that's built low to the ground. 5'9", 223. He's a bowling ball type runner with quick feet that can make people miss. I mean, not quite the burst that Lattimore has, but Ball also really experienced. He was the leading rusher a year ago for the Terrapins. It's been Lattimore so far this season. Ball gets the call again. When would you expect Maryland might take a shot downfield? They've had success power running. Formation change now. Trips to the wide side of the field. A little zone read on the inside, and they're going to work and try to spread them out. Usually those shots come just as you enter the red zone, somewhere around the 30 to 35-yard line, or when you're backed up in your own end. Again, three receivers. To the right, Steffi hands it off. Ball fighting for yards gets to the 45. Ball carries wins ball. John David Booty and the top ranked Trojans visit Nebraska. It's a prime time game on ABC, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. One of the biggest games in recent years for the Cornhuskers. Are they ready to step up and win a statement game? 
Sam Keller has to play a perfect game. Perfect game? Has to play a perfect game. Because you know Carroll's going to try to confuse him in the backfield with his defenses. How often has a QB played a perfect game against the Trojan well, defense? So I game. guess that answers your question. <laughs> Third and four. <laughs> Steffi gets away from the rushing corner and just throws it away. Oh, it's intercepted. Thought he was throwing it away. Instead, Eric Wicks, the safety, was waiting and picks it off. I honestly believe he was trying to throw it away and didn't get it there. I was coached back in college. The ball should land in row E when you're throwing a ball away. When you're throwing it away, throw it away. Doug, I don't think he was trying to throw it away. I think he thought his receiver was going to pull Turn off up. and go up the field. But this is what the coaches were worried about in the meetings, is making plays. Here, here's your receiver right here. They, he's expecting right. his receiver to come up the field and fight for the ball, and he didn't. But making poor decisions, game clock management, trying to get out. Three points would have been huge for them right here. Coach, he's trying to make a play, and he did for the other team. Region him encouraging him to take a shot, go downfield, be a little riskier, but that was not the situation. So the second turnover for Steffi sets up the Mountaineers and Slayton knifes for about six. Let's go to Reese Davis and check out what's upcoming on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Reese. All right, Chris, we'll have all the details on the Patriots punishment just handed down a little while ago by the NFL for videotaping opponent signals. The Blazers, Grego, number one pick in the NBA draft this past year, rookie season over before it starts. And Lou Holtz will give his pep talk to a team that really needs it. Nebraska, Mark Mace here too. Forward to that. White on second and four takes a shot downfield over throws right at almost intercepted Christian Barner the diving attempt couldn't quite hold on to it now clock management here for West Virginia up 14 to 7 you had a turnover Maryland has all three timeouts so they need to hold them here and call timeout get the ball back in their hands try to go down the field and West Virginia being as explosive as they can be he had a shot here completing this pass but missed it being as explosive as they can be they know they have the opportunity to march this ball, and they're thinking score. Mountaineers, two or four on third down so far tonight. White, covered by Henderson for a loss. Another downhill charge by number one into the backfield. And the Terrapins after the big stop. Chris Koss, defensive coordinator, did a nice job here of game planning against a tendency. Had the right call on. His defense made the adjustment. Pre-snap, listened to the call at the line of scrimmage. A blitzer came off the slot receiver, and Pat White took a hesitant step to look to dump it to the slot receiver. And Reynald wasn't looking, so he had to tuck it under his arm and run it up in there. Not good to be hesitant when number one is in the neighborhood. Maryland spends the timeout. They'll get the ball back. West Virginia perhaps could have run more clock had they not had that that downfield shot. Now Maryland has some time. Now here's where Jordan Steffi has to really be on the sidelines and forget what just happened in the previous series. Here's the answer to our athletic trivia question. The last time Michigan and Notre Dame both finished with a losing record. We'll give you some visual clues here. 1963 the year that Starback won the Heisman Trophy in Navy. Irish went two and seven. Good pressure for the Terrapins. Almost got to McAfee. And Barner makes the fair catch. And the Terrapins with a minute 26 to work with before halftime will have very good field position. Yeah, back in 63. Of course, the Vietnam War ongoing. Tragic events in Dallas. Roger Staubach, who Corso still says is the best player he's ever seen, won the Heisman Trophy that year. So, in other words, it was a long time ago. 63. Yeah. Loved watching. Do you Roger think they're both going to finish with losing That's records this year? Good question, young man. Do you, do you really think so? No, I think Michigan pulls it out. I think Michigan comes around. I agree. I agree. But that may be but seven Notre Dame. Five. Notre Dame goes another year. Yes. I think, yes. All right. 
Deion Latimer rotating back in. It's his turn to tailback, but Steffi's going to throw over the middle. Incomplete. Darius Hayward Bay in traffic. Could not make the catch. Do you see the DBs? He felt them coming. Yeah. You know? He was trying to settle down in the zone, and the quarterback was leading him into uh, traffic. I like Steffi throwing the football. I, I, He's I got like a good too. arm. He had a bad decision. You know, miscommunication on his interception. Uh, he still should have seen the extra defensive back. The, the receiver did not turn up the sideline like he anticipated. It would be huge for the Terrapins if they can get something before halftime. Mountaineers get the ball to start the second half. Oh, wow. Steffi fires low. Good job collecting it by Joey Hanos. Flags down as the All-ACC tight end takes it to the Mountaineers 40. Now we'll check the marker. They're, they're calling. I don't know which way they're I think they're going to call illegal pick. It's what I think. From the outside in to free up number 80. I think you had an illegal pick coming here. Or Larry, well, Larry Williams is a defensive back on the play, but it looked to me like he was trying to jam the receiver, and the receiver was just pushing back. It was one-on-one. -on -one. I, I would have called a pick. I don't know what they saw, but it's a Big East crew. Of pass interference, number 18 on the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty in the previous spot. Replay second down. Called it on the receiver, Laquan Williams, the freshman converted safety. Yeah. Honestly, to me, it's not a pick. Uh, there's the pick. But Steve, he ran the defender. No. He's got his hands on him, though. No, that's I don't the agree. problem. He's running the defender into the other guy. If he's trying to erase and get through without bodying with his hands, then it would not. It would have been a scrape, a nice scrape. Scrape, rub, scrape. You know, offensive terms. Defensive term, it's a pick. It was. Yeah, it's a, it's a crushing penalty on Williams, and it negates a 17 yard gain. Moves the ball all the way back to the 28 yard line and leaves him a minute 15. Second and 25. Now West Virginia may be deciding to use those timeouts to try to get the ball back. Steffi bolts straight up the middle. Driven down by Johnny Holmes, the safety. And now they'll have to spend another timeout. Nope, they'll wind the clock now. Clock is running, no timeout. They just had to set the ball. Now there's some confusion on the field. I thought they called, somebody called timeout. Sure. Out. Otherwise, why would the clock have stopped? Maryland. Second timeout of the half. <laughs> All right, to get this sorted out, the Terrapins do take timeout. We'll come back. On third and 15, Steffi steps up at a poor throw. He's trying to get it to Hainos. Very low throw, and now, with 52 seconds to go, the Terrapins will have to punt. Well, it was third and 15, Craig. Both the, uh, you and I are looking at each other like, why would Maryland call timeout there? I thought that West Virginia had used one of their three timeouts, and Maryland gave them an extra timeout, in effect. I don't like... You don't uh, like their chances of converting on third and 15? No, position. not at all. Okay. Absolutely. I Let just don't like run out, make them use their timeouts there. I don't know why they did that. I don't like the idea of wait, White or Slate and getting their hands on the ball one more time for a couple of running plays. Even running plays are dangerous when West Virginia's got the ball. Travis Baltz quickly gets it away. It's a not a good kick off the side of his foot. Bounces out of bounds, and West Virginia will have very good field position and 46 seconds to work with. And three timeouts. And, and, and you know, just the, the, the threat of having to go defend White and Slayton again. They could have a three play, 20 second drive. Yeah, we saw their first drive was two plays, 25 yards, whatever it was. Ray Lewis better have reminded his buddies going on the field right there to take it a play at a time, or they'll be in trouble here. A freshman punter, just a 22 yarder. Mountaineers, will they try for more here? 60 yards away from the end zone. That's 30 away from field goal range. This is Slayton. Once again, dropped for a loss. Rick Costa, Anthony Wiseman there on the stop. Let's spend a timeout. One thing that's different from last year, Chris, you called this game. 
Chris Kosh, the defensive coordinator, this is his second season. And every year, a new guy, when a guy comes into a new system, it's a given. There's an adjustment. There's a time that has to come together. He was learning their skills, and so now this defense looks to be playing a lot better tonight. More downhill, don't they? Well, less predictable. That was the problem last year. The Friedgen felt that even defense was too predictable. Wherever you see greatness, there's much you don't see. The path that led to the goal, the support of others, and the careful way everything's choreographed to create an effortless end. Fueled by 150 years of teamwork between alumni, students, faculty, and staff, the University of Maryland is now a leading public research university. And together, there's so much more we can do. The University of Maryland. Fear the turtle. Second and 11, White will throw it. Fires high, incomplete. Rifled the ball along the sidelines. Jock Sanders, the true freshman, pretty well defended by J.J. Justice, and now it's third and long. You spent your whole half, you know, whole summer getting ready for a football game, and the defense has shown up tonight. They showed up, right? You don't want to lose all of that in the last 30 seconds of a half. You got another snap to go. But the Mountaineers gained only 213 and a half. You thought you did a pretty good job. Look out, Slayton, Sutter steps into Maryland territory, has a first down. And stop it to move the chain, 27 seconds in the half. A quick 12 yards. I was pretty impressed Maryland defensively on first down when I was thinking maybe they're going to go prevent. Came with the blitz, shut the run down, got in the backfield. They got the penetration they needed. Now on second and third down, they went to the pre-event and Slayton bust the run. It took Slayton 15 carries, but he gets over the 100-yard mark at 103 and a touchdown. Two timeouts, another timeout to go. So West Virginia's in good shape right here. You know what? I mean, this, that extra timeout that they didn't have to spend that Maryland used on their series now really coming into play here. Still need about 20 yards to get comfortable field goal range for McAfee. They're going to run it, and Slayton is going to be stopped for no gain. And the clock stopped again with 18, 17 seconds left in the half. Again, a first down blitz by the Maryland defense, blitzing right into the into the run, trying to shut down the running game. Interesting two-minute offense for West Virginia. I mean, how many teams out of a, you know, 120, 180 teams are throwing the ball in this situation? Well, you, you got one team that has Pat White and Steve Slayton. And you know what's really scary? If you analyze that last play and watched it, he gave it to Slayton. But, man, that defense caved in. If he'd have pulled that football, all of a sudden Pat White's running around the other side for 60 yards. Even though it's a running play, there's a lot of different options of potential for either one of them to get in the open field. And that's what they're looking for. Spread that defense out, find a crease, one of them in the open field, they'll be in the end zone in a hurry. Now, so much speed and so dangerous this offense. Maryland just trying to hang on, get out of this thing with the last 20 seconds in the half because this offense gets the ball back, West Virginia, to start the second half. You don't want to fall any farther behind. It's been a, a pretty good start for Maryland considering they had to dodge two turnovers, two big mistakes by Steffi. But again, the Pat White issue, Make Pat throw the football against you and beat you throwing the football. Well, it looks like he's in position to throw the football. As Slayton. Slot. In the slot. Five receivers. White pressured. Steps up. Hit. Fumbles. The ball's loose. Maryland has it. One timeout to go. The Terrapins have the football with 13 seconds at the West Virginia 49. Throw the ball down the field, and you got a chance now to get some points. But this is pressure. This is the defensive line coming after them. I mean, you got guys sitting that pin in the years back. Defense it, didn't take a playoff. It was only a three-man rush playing prevent, and they get pressure off the three-man rush, knock the ball loose. That's Rick Costa forcing the fumble. Mac Frost was there. And now we'll see what Steffi can do. They have the one timeout. Yeah. 
Puts it to Lattimore, goes up, makes the play, and they'll have to spend the timeout right here. He loses a yard. Crowd didn't like the call. But the crowd doesn't realize really also that the power that's on that other side of the field and how well this has been played for a first you half. You like the call there? You know what? If, if, if you get a play where he gets up the field sure. to the 35, it might work. Now you take a Hail Mary shot into the... Is Doug still up here with us? <laughs> Doug, Fridge needs you right now. <laughs> I don't know if Fridge, that play to go I don't know away. Fridge, and judging by what he's saying is definitely, I don't know if he loved the, no, the yeah, decision he's, he's there. Saying, look, look, I got Doug Flutie up in the booth. You mind if I let him borrow your helmet here real quick? See, I, we I would put that thing up for Darius Hayward Bay and say, go get the football. Make five seconds left. Uh, Throw that sucker absolutely. up in the air and let him go. Yeah, but get. you have a chance there if you could get 15, 20 yards in one play. Yeah, if you can feel that in four seconds. No, not now. Before but that little play swing before, pass. Uh, yes, I yeah. agree. Throw something up a seam, a corner route, something. Even if it's a jump ball and it's intercepted, you, you take you're a, a yourself shot a chance. Three play, except. And, it, you know, at the end of the day, you got the defense off the field. You talked about Keller for Nebraska, John David Booty, and the top-ranked Trojans visiting Lincoln. It'll be not a blackout crowd, but a sea of red that USC will wade into in Lincoln. 8 o'clock, primetime, Saturday night on ABC. Brent Musburger, Kirk Herb Street. And it's the Salters. The key to this play now is hanging on to the football as long as you can. If they are throwing for the end zone here rather than a trick play, could be a hook and lateral. Hang on to the ball as long as you can. Let your receivers get down there and then put it up. You keep Lattimore in the backfield. Pressure on the edge. Steffi steps up. Six foot eight, tight end. Now it's picked off in the end zone. He's looking for the tight end, Hano, so he got all the way down the field. But Eric Wicks, the safety, with the interception. Three turnovers in the first half for Maryland. But nothing like the debacle that unfolded when these teams met a year ago in Morgantown. Mountaineers offense will be back on the field to start the second half. Friedgen with three turnovers. The early miscue in the very first play from scrimmage has to feel okay about this first half. Let's go to Aaron. Well, Coach, with five seconds left, what did you want to see there out of your offense? Well, what I was trying to do is throw the ball out to the back and have him block and try to get it in field goal range. Jordan threw it behind him. You got to get it out in front of him. You said yesterday this is Jordan's first big game. How would you evaluate his first half? Okay, you know, he can do some things better, but he's, he's playing with composure, and uh, I'm not disappointed with him. All right, Coach, thanks. So the three turnovers for the Terrapins. They hold West Virginia to 223 total offense. Now let's go to Reese, Mark, and Lou, the Pontiac performance. White's got it, and he's got a crease. Pat White into the secondary, into the end zone. Uh, it's exactly like last year's game. Mistakes by Maryland. West Virginia takes advantage of it, sticks it right in the end zone. Lattimore's got it. Cuts it back. A long touchdown, Terrapins. They go back to Slate. Has the sidelines and score. Well, in front of this big sellout crowd, a pumped-up Maryland team comes out, has a disastrous start, a fumbled snap on their first play from scrimmage, and 45 seconds into the game, guys, West Virginia has a 7-0 lead. Since then, it's been an even game. Three turnovers for Maryland. One of them was a Hail Mary at the end of the half, a, a, a turnover and a missed field goal for West Virginia. Well, I think, you know, Maryland probably went in the locker room, and they're very happy with where they stand right now in this football game. They'd like to be winning, but I think it's a lot better than last year where they were blown <laughs> out, and they really changed their game plans. Now oh, yeah. they got to settle into a little routine here for the second half. Yeah, I think they have to just keep pressuring West Virginia, keep blitzing, committing people to the run, and force Pat White to beat you through the air. They had the running game going in the early days, the Home Depot coaching adjustments. Offensively, keep pounding the ball. Pound it away, pound it away. Make your big plays through play action. Defensively, penetrate, blitz, and get after them. Conversely, West Virginia, I believe they need to stick with the option because it's challenging Maryland's defense to play every snap from sideline to sideline. They're spread out all over the place with Slayton speed and white speed. If Maryland's defense doesn't play every single snap, It'll be a disaster. Or a touchdown. Ray Lewis <laughs> still believes there. Yeah. Chris Roberts to kick off. The dangerous freshman Noel Duran is super recruit. Speedster comes up to take it at the 10. Devine. Oh, being very close to running through that tackle and breaking it. Gets out across the 35. Moses Foku, the stop for Maryland. 
So the important thing for Maryland get Rodriguez's offense off the field quickly Aaron. So I had a chance to speak with head coach Rich Rodriguez coming out of the locker room. He said he felt like in the first half his offense gave up a few big plays. The reason why execution and some misreads. He stressed to his team you got to keep the focus there because he himself realized that Maryland did go in feeling pretty good about themselves after the first half. I felt good about the way they stopped White. He had that touchdown run of 22 yards. His next seven carries, negative 15 yards combined. So they've stopped the quarterback runs. They feature Slayton there for a short game. Speaking of feeling good, Aaron, I'd like to know on the sidelines kind of the attitude, the demeanor of Jordan Steffi, the quarterback in Maryland, how he feels his composure. Good, Aaron, on that case. Steffi known to be a real emotional guy. Frigian said before the game he didn't mind the look in his eye felt he's ready to make good decisions tonight had to shake off the early turnover on second and seven white will pitch it out to Reina that makes a catch and has a first down a flag comes in they cross into Maryland territory Boku and Barnes combining on the tackle. They're signaling a hold against West Virginia. That's the preliminary indication. It'll wipe out the first down catch. Holding, 83 on the offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. They got Tito Gonzalez on the edge. Gonzalez on the outside out there in open space. It's just really hard for a wide receiver to have to block. You know, we got to those hands. Those guys are going to see you. They're holding out there. Well, Reynolds showed you what he can do in open space. He's as dangerous as Pat White and Steve Slayton. This guy with the football is like another running back, and we'll see Devine later. He's just as dangerous. Reynolds has a 41-inch vertical. They say he squats 695. Can you believe that? It's, well, I, yeah, I, I can't even. <laughs> I can't even picture these numbers. These kids are doing. I don't know. There's like e stats. There's like fake lifting stats. That are, I, 695 is a lot. That's ridiculous. They've got weapons spread out all over the field, and this is Divine, the freshman. A stiff arm, but he draws a crown and gets hammered at the 45. Jeremy Navarre, the defensive end. Flying up was the linebacker Philistine. Now you've got a, a, a every coach has a little chart over there to look at the number of touches who guys are having you know who's gotten the ball who hasn't received the ball. So he's going to continue to spread this thing out. But at the end of the day they're going to get that ball back in White and Slayton's hand. Well Slayton got tired against Marshall. They want to get Devine more involved in the freshman number seven earlier in the game. Good job of the Turks defense on that one third and 13. Slayton in the slot to the near side. White looks right for his roommate. The fire is complete to Daryl Jalla. Darrell Jalla takes it for first down yardage before Justice stops him at the 45. 21 yard gain as they spread the ball around. Now again, this is a slot. You got trips to the far side of the field to the left side. Watch the eyes of the quarterback. Knows exactly where he's going with the ball. The defense didn't lock up in the zone coming across. Yeah, but that's what you have. You have to force Pat White to beat you through the air. You don't want him to beat you with his legs. Nice accurate guard on third down, and now White has got it. Doesn't make the pitch. And makes a nice little cut down near the 32 before Foku stops him. Quick 13 yards. Now he's beating you with his legs, right? Now he's faking it, going the option. That's a given. It's a given that Pat White is going to get yards on the ground. Take that away and make him beat you the way he doesn't want to. They took away the fullback. You know, you know, you, you, the, the big fullback, Owen Schmidt, went in there and you had a convergence to the middle. You've got to be disciplined. You can't all jump on the dive back. Commit more to the run. Commit more to the run. Jalla to the bottom of the screen. It's Devine next to White. And the young guy's got it. Look at the speed. No elder mind. He's the next great one. Pick Down your poison. Huh? Pick your poison. Unbelievable quickness. Coach, what are you doing on defense? Well, again, it sets up with the fullback. There's a lot of focus on the inside here. And Devine with the, the eyeballs on his feet. I always say great runners, their feet know exactly where people are. I mean, that kind of move. Oh, free. This lateral, put his foot in the ground, a complete lateral jump. Kind of a jump cut. He fits Boom. right in here, doesn't he? For that speed. Close and goal. Schmidt in front of Slayton. And it's Slayton. 
Dives down, stopped short of the goal line. Now, wait a minute. If you're Maryland and, you, and you're sitting on the sidelines right now and you're Ralph Reed and you're sitting there thinking of Chris Kosh, defensive coordinator, holy mackerel. We stopped 10, now we got seven? Exactly. What's up? 10, 7, 5, 2, all of them. Where, where'd that cat come from? <laughs> he came out of Florida and very, very highly recruited guy of Fort Myers. Deion Sanders is Devine's guardian. 5'9", 170 pounds. You gotta love it. He's out of the game now, and that's Schmidt. Malone setback ran out in the slot behind White. Guess who's going to get the football here? <laughs> the Bagans straight ahead and not scoring. And Schmidt still fighting, but they blow him dead at the half-yard line. Philistine, the linebacker, filling with justice. That's stopping 250 pounds of strong guy there. Uh, or you knew who was going to get the ball, right? So you figured the Maryland defense knows who's going to get They had a stop earlier. Second quarter. Yep. They came in second quarter. Had a little confidence down there. I don't know about you guys, but I like to have a number 10 in the field, on the field at all times in the red zone. And he's down in there now behind Schmidt on third and goal. This is Slayton, untouched. Great Schmidt with the block. Great job at the line of scrimmage by Pat White, counting the numbers on the defense and going to the weak spot. The overshifted defense took the ball left, and it was an easy cakewalk into the end zone. Great job getting into the right play. So West Virginia does exactly the Terrapins faithful hoping they wouldn't do. They take the second half kickoff and march to the end zone to build a 14-point lead. <laughs> Last game, Slayton against Westboro against Maryland, the school that once withdrew a scholarship from him, and he's enjoying it so far. 107 yards, two touchdowns. West Virginia's touchdown set up by a 31-yard run from freshman Noel Devine. High school superstar ran for 92 touchdowns, almost 6,900 yards. Rolls off upbringing in Florida. Both of his parents attracting HIV, dying while he was just a youngster. Witnessed some tough things on the streets of Fort Myers. Deion Sanders took him under his wing, became his guardian, and he surprised a lot of folks as the kickoff goes out of bounds by choosing West Virginia. Devine, despite the hype of the reputation, though, when he met Rich Rodriguez, the coach said he knew right away this guy was special. He said, this, I'm going to be the closer on this guy's recruiting visit. I'm going to drive him around personally in my own car, and the rest of the recruits can go around on the bus. And Noel said, no, coach, wait a minute. There's other guys here. I'm, I don't want special treatment. I'll just ride the bus around with them. And Rodriguez was impressed and, he said, and very surprised. Yeah. He said, at that moment, I knew I had the right guy. And Devine went and stayed and lived with Dion the summer before his senior year and, and that's really good for Dion you know, you know an influence a mentor sure. he does that with a lot of kids it just shows he's got his head on straight he understands what's important the camaraderie with the teammates not looking like he's something special and taken under the coach's wing and all that it, it goes a long way as far as being a leader around your teammates and I know they're all incoming freshmen are all just recruits at the time but I'm sure he takes that same attitude into very year. well liked despite all the hype and a high school superstars on was treated that way they'll re-kick after the penalty with the ball going out of bounds so it's just a low kick this one headed for out of bounds again and fielding it and falling down is Danny Akendo he had room to run but slipped and the penalty doesn't really hurt Maryland there as or hurt West Virginia as Maryland will take over in the 27. These are Applebee's weekend menu. All right. Got a little challenge coming up there at uh, Boston College traveling to Georgia Tech. John Tenuta, you think he'll have something for old Matt Ryan? He'll be bringing it. Matt will be taking some licks, but he's a tough nut. He'll stand in there. Important early game in the ACC. If BC can go 3 0 in the conference already, they're off to a great start. It's a Maryland team that was picked fifth. In the Atlantic Division preseason, Frazier not bothered by that. Very often in the ACC, teams come from nowhere and win it. The Hokies did so in their first year. Were not expected to do well. Wake Forest, of course, last year. And Maryland had a chance that they'd beaten Wake Forest in that game here to play Georgia Tech for a spot in the BCS game. It was Lattimore 
the ball carrier is down. Manamore a good first half. He was the main offensive weapon for the Terrapins, and he'll limp off now as Ball comes in and they move away from that two series per guy rotation. But really, there there is no dominant team in the ACC. There's no outright favorite to win the conference. Well, there's one quarterback that everybody talks about, Matt Ryan in Boston College. Everybody else is kind of in the same pile. They're all figuring out who they have, including here at Maryland. If you know if Steffi comes along and makes some plays, all of a sudden Maryland's a contender. Steffi now is a second and four. Jackson, the fullback in front of ball. Hayward Bay in motion. And this is ball. Wasn't expecting to play this series. All of a sudden had to get his hat on and come into the game. Staying with it. Staying with the game plan. You know, don't rush. Don't put pressure on Steffi. Don't let him make a mistake in his series out here now. It's only a 14 point game. Exactly what you said. Stay with what's getting in, in the position to have a chance. Well, first play, better make the first down here for third and one. That would be a good start. That would be excellent. Latimer, you saw come back in the ball game. Lined up behind Jackson. Third and a long one. Latimer makes a cut. Bounces up near the 45, has the first down. But again, when we started this football game, it was the offensive line at Maryland that really kept the team in. After the turnover on that snap in the first series for Maryland, the O-line, they got it going. They dominated the whole first half. They really did. They got down to the end of the half. You get into two minutes situational football stuff, and they got away from running the ball. Now they've got plenty of time to put a nice long drive together. You don't get many opportunities, though, to, to come back against the Mountaineers because they, they don't stop scoring usually once they get rolling. So, crucial possession for Maryland. Little pump fake. They'll hand it off to Lattimore. Trying to get her on the corner. Just muscles to the 45. Antonio Lewis in a buck 85 came up to challenge him. And again, you know, you go back and you look at the start of this football game and you say it's 21 to 7 right now in the third quarter. But you go back and you look at the first snap there. And this was disaster. I mean, a touchdown that the, the Mountaineers put in the end zone put a lot of pressure on the Maryland football team and their focus. It was like deja vu. That was a big test for Maryland, though. They bounced back from it, moved the football again right now, controlling the ball on the ground. So they're back into their game. The tight end, Hanos, set back off the line of scrimmage. Williams in motion as a blocker for Lattimore who turns the corner and gets into West Virginia territory for a first down. Quentin Andrews, the safety converted into the bandit linebacker, made the stop. Aaron, how's, how's the, the mindset? What have you noticed down on the sidelines with Steffi? Well, of course, remember his offensive lineman, Andrew Crummy, told us yesterday in the spring, hard time controlling his emotions, a little crazy there in the huddle. You know, during West Virginia's scoring drive, I was watching him. He had his hands on his hips, just sit, sat with his offensive lineman, very, very calm, and that's the way he's looked throughout these past couple of minutes, Craig. He's looked poised in the pocket all day long. He looks very comfortable. It's Lattimore again. Steffi's overcome a lot to get to this moment, the biggest start of his life. 2004 had an injury, a concussion on a Thursday night beatdown against Virginia Tech, then tore a meniscus. Then when he was recovering from that, very near the football complex, he was hit by a car. Came back from that after redshirting in 2005. Bicep surgery was a, was another injury on his throwing arm. Is a, a knee there? And now earning the starting job with help from Josh Portis's suspension. But Fritz says if we lose another quarterback injury, we got a serious critical situation on this team. Lattimore has the corner. Crowd calling for the flag. They don't get it at the 41-yard line. It's a hold. It'll call it back. No flag on the tackle, but it's a hold. But you're finding a weakness right now around the corner of this West Virginia defense. And that little zone read, the quarterback here pretty soon, Steffi's got to pull it because he's got an open backside. But the thing that kills a running football team are penalties. A penalty like this puts you at it down a distance where four yards, five yards isn't going to get it done now. Now it's second and 20, and you're in that situation where you need big chunks. They've, they've, they've been in great down and distance. Number eight, Hayward Bay's got to show up. He'll be at the top of your screen on the right side. 
He's got to make a play. He can, young, he's got great ability after the catch. He's been quiet tonight, the main receiving weapon for the Terrapins. The corner blitz, they flip it out. Latimer makes the catch and gets hammered. West Virginia by pressure off the corner. They go right back to that part of the field. And a huge hit by Johnny Dingle, the senior from Miami. They ran the little slip screen into the blitz, which is usually a great play. <laughs> Dingle, a guy from the mean streets of Miami, is just now fulfilling his potential. He's been in the doghouse at times in his career, but now in his senior year, he's showing that next level potential. And there's scouts from 18 NFL teams watching here tonight. It'd be a good night to put on a show if you're a senior. 18 of them, huh? 18. Yeah. And Ray Lewis enjoyed that hit. <laughs> the wrong team, though. But he appreciated it as a defense. He appreciates it no matter what. Third and 22. Steffi, well, Andy, a protection fires short. It's caught, but nowhere near a first down as Okendo Not bad. at the 50 yard line. Not bad. Take that all day. You know, get to midfield, punt the football, put the pressure on your defense to go out and make a stop. Don't force it down the field and turn the ball over. He took a peek up the field. It wasn't there. He took a completion, positive yards. But again, the holding penalty kills this drive. And now Maryland's got to go back on defense after the punt from Travis Baltz. It's Vaughn Rivers deep. Rivers fields it at the 14. Blocked by Anderson on special teams. <laughs> the superstar linebacker down there covering months and Doing what he usually does, brings it back there. Like See that. that. Ray gets to thoroughly enjoy that one because it was the right team. That's his seventh tackle of the night. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Chrysler. The way our vehicles come together is what sets us apart. Chrysler, engineered beautifully. And Gillette Fusion Power Phantom. For the best shave ever in manual and battery power, visit GilletteFusion.com for details. This is old EJ. Yeah, yeah. Butkus and Big Narek Award winner. No doubt looking in tonight. With Aaron Henderson's little brother on the field. Maryland usually wears red tonight in the all black. On special occasions, they bring it out. Slayton cannot get away from Henderson is all over the field tonight. Looking very much like the preseason All-American. He's going after him. He's showing us something. You know what? Henderson is a guy that came to play football today. You, you see how fast he went to get the runner? Well, Adrian Moten was unblocked in the hole, and Slayton just left him standing still. But it was the pursuit, the second guy that got him. Second and seven. This is Slayton in a crease, spun around, stopped for a short game. We talked about the history of Maryland football, a towering figure in that history is Daryl Hill, the first African-American athlete in the ACC. He was a veteran on the team that featured a young Ralph Friedgen. Aaron Andrews will visit with Daryl Hill. Still very much a role model on this campus for the current Maryland players. Director of Corporate Relations and Major Gifts on the fundraising trail. Come after them. You've got to come. That's what they've been successful with. You've got to come. They're showing blitz on the edge. Schmidt plows ahead, does not get the first down. 250 pounds, and he stopped. Chase Bullock, the Mike Backer, was there. Commit to the run. Bring him, like, like Craig said. You have everything cut. Force West Virginia to beat you throwing the football. Easier said than done for a team that runs it better well, than anybody. You know, it's amazing. They've got it unblocked sounds simple, people. Doug. It sounds simple. Maryland has unblocked people coming in the hole, and they fan. He just said it. Do you see what Rich said? He goes, you got to pull that football. Because they pinched hard on him, and he yeah. just told him, Pat, you got to pull the football. Get around the corner. Read it. Different protection look for West Virginia as McAfee is back to punt. Rolls to his right and boots it off the side of his foot. That's Okendo. Unable to get away from traffic stop at the 35. 
So Maryland's defense gets a stop as we go to Aaron. Well, Chris, you mentioned Ralph Regan bringing along his former teammate Daryl Hill to the staff in 2003. What is the message you try to get across to the student athletes that you work with? Well, I try to tell the kids that there's life after football and to prepare themselves for a career because most of them are not going to go to the NFL. So I want them to concentrate on their schoolwork and then their career development afterwards. Daryl Ralph shared with us yesterday that he finds it absolutely amazing that athletes these days have no idea what you had to endure in the early 60s. What surprises you when you talk to them about your situation? They're incredulous. I don't, I don't think they really understand what it was like in, in the early days. Uh, they, they are disbelieving and they, they just don't understand that it really happened. But it's important, especially for the African-American athletes, that they understand that history uh, so that they can know what, where we've come from and what, you know, where we need to go. So uh, I try to help them, and uh, they're, they're very curious and, and want to know, but they can't relate to it. Thank you so much for your time. You're, well, you're welcome. Chris? Aaron Friedgen was telling us yesterday that he saw firsthand what Vera went through in those early years when they would go on the road and play in a less enlightened era. Our friend Lee Corso involved in recruiting. Dale, he was a receiver of yeah. our assistant here at, at, at Maryland. I think he raised like 25 million bucks here. And he, yeah. He's really strong. Great, great booster. Now you saw them take a downfield shot on the previous play. A good job by Larry Williams to break it up. Now they go back to Lattimore and it'll send up a, a third and long. See Ray Lewis a, a hug for Daryl. Yeah, but you know what he also does that mentoring program and, and trying to get kids beyond. They really do a great job here. Kevin Glover, former player, he's here on the program and they help these kids transition to the real world. Life skills. Teach it, I, simple things like starting a bank account, how to take out a mortgage. Simple things that you need to know to move on in life. And to move on in this drive, Maryland needs to gain at least seven yards on this play. Play clock inside seven seconds now. Steffi looks right, has time, fires incomplete. Looking for a flag there was Okendo. He was pretty well covered by Ryan Mundy. There is no flag, and they'll have to punt. I thought Steffi showed good patience, moved in the pocket nicely. It was just excellent coverage in the West, West Virginia secondary. How about the defense, West Virginia? You know, they're stepping up, playing pretty good. We came into this game wanting to really analyze and see what West Virginia had on defense because they haven't shown us a whole lot. Right. Now, this is by far their biggest test. I don't know if this will answer the question if they have a championship defense. No. They'll face a lot better offenses than, than Maryland. If Louisville comes to mind. Ball to high kick. Rivers trying to sidestep away. Can't get away. Stop at the 23. But one more time, Maryland's defense has to go back on the field in the final minutes of this third quarter and get the offense the ball back. Sunday night from historic Fenway Park, the Red Sox and Yankees meet for the final time in the regular season with both teams in the middle of the playoff hunt. While Boston tries to close out the American League East, New York is in a fight to the finish for a place in October. That big series, it begins Friday night. Pettit on Suzaka. Mr. Flutie hardly an uninterested party in that one. <laughs> big Red Sox guy. We had a walk-off home run last night. Big poppy, two home yeah. runs, including the walk-off. Slayton has a crease. It's Devine, check it, and Noel Devine down the sidelines. Headed for the pylon, marked out at the one. It all starts up front. There's a lot of speed in the backfield, obviously, at West Virginia. But you've got to be in a lane assignment. We see a big gape here. Look at this. Look at the blocking on the outside. Clearly an excellent job. West Virginia up front and then Devines. You know, I told you guys, I was wanting to know whether or not he had breakaway speed. Slayton would have scored there, but this isn't bad. If you look back, the, the entire offensive line is running laterally. 68, Dent turns on his man on the nose and creates the cut, the north and south seam for Devine. He's got 107 yards on two running plays. And now to the young guy, gets him down close. Steve Slayton busts in for his third touchdown of the night, 46th of his career. 
You see the big man, the fullback, Schmidt, around the corner, leading the way. This West Virginia football team, Chris, you, you asked we were going to break a while ago about the defense of West Virginia. Yep. Maybe not being able to handle Louisville. Could be a shootout. West Virginia and Louisville could well, be a I would, shootout. I would expect again. so, yeah. yeah. It was last year, just decided by mistakes. In that case, Slayton fumbles with an injured wrist that, that turned that game in Louisville's favor. McAfee on for the conversion. And West Virginia continues the pattern. They're so tough as the game wears on and the defense gets a step slower. They strike quickly. 27 second scoring drive and they're now up by 21. Nice, nice hairdo. That is a football player. I'll tell you, I, I like the fact that you make the kid earn his stripes. The vine busts the long run. You bring Slayton back in to score the touchdown. And that's going to be a big difference in this race in the Big East this year. Now that they've got Devine another guy can you imagine keeping Slayton healthy and fresh he's scary this guy I mean Devine <laughs> Devine is doing what people expected him to do yeah. really out of high school See, the surprise was that he just came to a place where he's not the featured back right away he made the decision to kind of come and, and share the spotlight Slayton's for, gone though. next year next year okay. Slayton's out of here okay is it that, that's he's, not a scoop that's just your that's presumption just, okay. you know if he's asking anybody with with realistic knowledge of the number of carries he's going to have in his life, they'll tell him to go on. He's ready to play in the next level. He also <laughs> realizes in this offense, he's going to be able to get the ball in space and be successful. You know, he's a little guy. He's not going to be an eye back slamming it up in there. He's working in space with a guy like Pat White and, and another mobile corner. Suits him well, yeah. And the offense suits him. McAfee boots it low. Taken by Carroll on the ground. And he turns the corner to the 39. Well, one of the issues in college football this week, LSU's impressive win at home against Virginia Tech. And you can see that oh, here USC, we well, <laughs> this, this total over here of 40 first place votes is down 20 from last week. LSU is getting closer. Pretty close right there, isn't it? Huh? Very close. 12 points. And the there are a lot of people. All state standings. There are a lot of people, Chris, asking voters. Why is an LSU number one? LSU think from USC is going to get better and better. And you're right. USC hasn't done anything yet. Well, they get a chance on Saturday night. I'm looking forward to seeing the Trojans in their first test. ABC primetime against the Cornhuskers. It's Lance Ball in as a blocker in the blitz. And Steffi wants to throw one first down. Dumps it off to Hanos, the tight end for a short game. Antonio Lewis on the stop. Hey, all right, USC LSU. You're an AP voter. I mean, you still got USC number one? No, I was voting them number one. This week I switched to LSU. Not, nothing against what USC did in their off week. Right. I'm sure they practiced well. But LSU answered some questions for me. I, I was wondering how many options they would have on offense, and they showed a little more diversity with LaFell, with Holiday. Against Virginia Tech, that was a very impressive performance very on offense and defense. We knew what they had. We saw them a couple weeks ago. You got LSU or USC, Doug? I think it's going to wind up being LSU. Well, I'm not sure what it's going to be at the end of the season. Right now, I got the Tigers ahead of the Trojans, and Steffi keeps it. Plows ahead to the 45. It'll set up a third and short. And again, they don't. Nobody cares where they are really right now, except at the end of the year, we want to be one and two. And at this point, I, you know, there's a lot of belief LSU, USC will be one and two. But what I see in LSU is a complete defense and an offense that week by week is going to get better and better and better as Matt Flynn gets more and more experience. Now USC is already there. And they probably have the best linebacker. We think before. they're there, Doug. See, that's the problem. Exactly. Like we don't know yet. Well. We're going to find out at Nebraska this weekend if that team is really as good as we think they are. Trojans have a lot of road tests this year, most of them in the Pac-10, but it starts in Lincoln on Saturday night. Crucial play for Maryland to have any chance of hanging in this game. They must convert this third down, so they'll take a timeout and talk about it with 22 seconds left in the quarter. What about West Virginia versus teams like Oklahoma and Florida? Other teams up in the top five, Texas, have the Mountaineers shown you enough in the early going so far to justify the number four ranking? On offense, they have. And I think their defense has played better tonight than I was expecting them to, because this is not a bad team. This is an ambush game here. You've had a Maryland football team that was embarrassed last year, prepared all summer for this game. And you know, they, West Virginia's offense, defense done a pretty good job. Well, the next test for the Mountaineers, they do have East Carolina at home. And remember how well the Pirates of Skip Holtz played in a motion lapped in Blacksburg. Then they go back on the road in their conference opener at USF in Tampa on a Friday evening on ESPN. So you'll be able to see them Friday night in USF right now. If you, if you look at the teams in the state of Florida, 
eight of them in Division 1A, maybe just behind the Gators. That's a pretty cool standing, though, graphic, isn't it? When that you look at the awesome. Florida schools, when you say South Florida may be the second best team in the state of Florida. Now, Hurricanes fans are saying, wait a minute now, we, we lost in Oklahoma, let's not write us up yet. Third down. Hayward Bay in motion. Steffi is set. Coming right up in his face was Morty Ivy on the blitz. Former high school quarterback. Was Steffi stuffed there, Chris? Steffi was stuffed. Okay. That's sweet, Lucas. <laughs> Ray Lewis. He enjoys sweet. a linebacker Ray, coming yeah. on the blitz. No matter what team he's rooting for, he just loves seeing people get hit. And West Virginia. Very impressive third quarter. That's been their pattern. Good on defense, explosive on offense, and they take a 21-point lead of the final 15 minutes. A lot of folks made the drive on a couple hundred miles separating these two campuses in this border feud that last until 2010 of the first play of the fourth quarter appears to be a punt from Travis Baltz and they will not fake it he gets it away Rivers comes up with a short kick takes it on the move at the 27 and is hammered at the 35. <laughs> Well, you wonder who West Virginia will trot out there this time. Will it be Divine or Slayton? Doesn't it matter. Will not, it will be Divine Intervention, whoever's in the backfield. But when you talk about these two guys and the way they do, you go back and you look at this football game here. I think the country's figuring out there's a young guy named Noel Divine, and he can play the game. A couple of carries, what you say, Chris? 100 plus yards, and then here's the president, Slayton. Do you think Divine busting a long run motivates Slayton to show, wait a minute now, I'm the boss? I don't think it's Slayton pretty works. secure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's worried. <laughs> Wait a minute, kid. Take a back seat. <laughs> a couple of young guys, the freshman receivers, Brandon Hogan and Will Johnson, check into the game. And this is Slayton on the pitch. Henderson went there to meet him one more time. Aaron Henderson, once again, piling up the tackles. His 10th on the night. He's a guy that had 114 as a sophomore. Yeah, you know, if you're a Maryland observer, you got to get better in the punt game. Their punt has not been good today. You want to become a complete football team, not just the quarterback. But... Yeah, he's a true freshman. Yeah. Today's Under Armour advantage. Highlighting Anderson, who's just a junior. It's Slayton around the corner. Lasso, but gets up near the first down at the 45. He goes, a little cowboy in here, Lasso. Yeah, we gotta I like it. it. You got to go back That's to the ranch you. with this huh? guy, don't you? That, that hey, was for you. Where are the Wranglers? You know, Where's the belt? Where's I, the boots? You got. You know, I'm going to get you guys a nice set of boots before the year's over. Get you a good right. belt. You get you. Get you, you know, get you a little belt going there. Uh, we'll, is, that, we'll, is that a cowboy belt that's you wear? Cowboy. Said, yeah, I don't know. That's, 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 that's a fake outfit. That's not fake. That ain't no fake. That's a real. That's a real one. No. Greg actually does roping, right? You do, yeah, like, I do. Like cow cutting or I whatever you call team it. Team roping, you know. He's, he's got his roping. boots on with his suit. I know, but he's not just like a rhinestone guy. No, he's this for guy real. actually does ranching out there. Look out, Divine is back in the game here on first down. White pulls it and is smacked. Navarre, they're, they're getting it down now. They're down by 21, but that Maryland defense is starting to. They played well up. all night. I mean, West Virginia's going to make their plays, and they bust, but when they bust loose, it's a 70 yard run. It's a 50 yard run. Uh, it's the negative plays. You got to make some negative plays in the backfield to stop drives. And Maryland's offense in the first quarter, 115 yards, since then, less than 70. Yeah, they're not getting that much help from the O, but it's tough when you, when you say they play well, and it does seem like that, but West Virginia has a, almost 300 yards rushing. That shows you how explosive they are, and they've got four different guys that can get it done. Schmidt to the left. It's Devine. Schmidt blocks for him. The young guy sidestepped into the secondary, still going. A flag is down. They got his face mask on the tackle, and Devine refuses to be tackled. They'll tack on yardage to the first down run. Moses wow. Foku got the mask. Devine is, is special. Yeah. You know, he really is. You know, there are a lot of guys who get the publicity coming into college football, and they don't live up to the expectations. Here's a young man, because he has his head on his shoulders, right? He's very humble, a hard worker. 
Uh, you know, they may have to come come up with a new rule if you could just get anything on Divine. That's a major face mask. It spun him around and he just kept running. He did a 360. Grabbing the face mask. The defense. The 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First hit. Something I noticed from last week. He's 170 pounds and he keeps driving his legs and falls forward. The kick keeps going forward, and he did a jump stop there, cut to the his best, right. The best east-west sideway runner I've ever seen in, in football is Barry Sanders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now watch this. You tell me this isn't quickness going left to right. Look Boom. at that. Is that Boom. unbelievable? That was, that was, and I hate to say it, because Sanders is the best college player I've ever seen in my lifetime, but that was almost Sanders-like. Scary. I'd buy stock in, right buy in stocks in West Virginia's future. He's only get, he's only averaging 42 yards of carry tonight, Devon, by the way. Sit him down. <laughs> he's out of the game, and now it's merely Slayton and Schmidt in the game. <laughs> White still got it. Nowhere to run. Villastein, the middle backer, was waiting for him. White. Knocks the helmet off one of the defenders. Short game. Not a bad average, you know. <laughs> you're on national television. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys are just happy to have a 5.0, right? And you, you know, he's working on the 5.0. <laughs> you know, it's like Dickerson going out of the game and James comes in, right? Oh, there you go. Second and eight, and Slayton kind of picking his way on the right side. It's about three. To get a chance, you watch this offensive line of West Virginia. They move east and west from sideline to sideline in unison, and then Slayton just slides along and waits for that vertical cut to show. And somebody finally seals the defender off, and boom, north and south they go. But the thing that impresses me about Slayton, a lot of dancers. There's, yeah, Henderson, Henderson off from the sidelines now. He's I'll been the best defensive player from Maryland, and they're giving some attention to that that right arm. Hey, you know what? Back in Doug Flutie's time at Boston College, he used to love to play against West Virginia. Oh, the Mountaineers, no. I knew it was hey, coming. How about this? A big game. Your senior year, y'all fourth in the country. That yeah, was yeah. the future Mrs. Rodriguez. There's Rich Rodriguez out there. There's Doug Flutie. And so today we're having lunch and, and, and you know, kind of let Doug know that this was coming. And he goes, oh, Rich was on that team? <laughs> <laughs> well, his wife got more airtime than he did. I, I, I told Rich, too, in the pregame on the field, I said, hey, Rich, Doug didn't even know that you were on that team other. And he goes, not surprised. Right, you see? know, I wasn't getting him too many times. He was times. a DB. <laughs> you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't search him out. We and you could, certainly well, we could not be Stay away from Rodriguez. Yeah, it was the number one key of the game. Oh, we just couldn't beat them. That was White it. fires into traffic. Slayton did not bring it down inbounds. Caught it, but couldn't get the feet down. Close to a fourth touchdown. Isaiah Gardner and Rick Costa, the linebacker in coverage. But you know what? This is what the country and defensive coordinators are going to watch. Out of the backfield this time, you're going to see Slayton just up the field. On the wheel route. You know, and, and, you know, you, if you're a linebacker, you better have safety help over the top. And, and never as a defensive coordinator allow a linebacker to be responsible for Slayton. Pat McAfee missed the chip shot earlier this evening. This is 32 yards. 32. Sneaks that through as the... West Virginia lead grows to 24. I was 27 years old and I was between the pipes trying to make that big save. The shot, save Scurry! I think the 99 final influenced uh, a lot of passions uh, and a lot of those passions are actually on this team right now. We actually asked the question to a lot of the younger players what made them think that they could be on this team and a lot of them said, you know, the World Cup in 99, and they really decided that that moment that they wanted to go for it. That was in the Rose Bowl this year, the Women's World Cups in China. You know, that 99 World Cup team, they brought women's soccer to a level of popularity that my daughter... They did. They did? Yeah. Really? No, my daughter's No, I know they did. How do you know that? A television okay. commercial <laughs> with Michael Jordan and Mia Hamm, and he says, Dad, who's that guy with Mia Hamm? No, come on. 
<laughs> Terrell Skinner brought down in the USA and Sweden tomorrow morning 4 55 Eastern time that's when our wake up call is for the flights tomorrow morning Sweden and the US and it kind of the, in the group still had a tie against Korea the other day yeah those about three times a week we get up with that 445 wake up call and the days that you have a chance to sleep in I can't sleep in maybe if you go to the, the bar at the uh, the airport they'll have the women's world cup on for you you can watch it wait for your flight get a little action yeah we, we, we do those flights before everything opens to the airport. The newspapers haven't gotten there yet. I'm telling you. Starbucks is closed. You know, a bonus yeah. for us would be we could we could really get a paper route. I thought about it the other day. I'm leaving the house at 420. It's just dark. It just Cows hurts. are bellowing in the pasture. What are what I'm doing out there? We're not whining about our jobs. No, it hurts job. to wake Look. up early for me. I'm sorry. It hurts. You're not going to be watching the, the game tomorrow. And you thought you wanted to go down there and play. I'll, I'll watch it. Game. Okay, fine. We're you, all watching. You're you good with you watching it. Did you hear no. what Bobby Bowden said? Because there's Florida State plays at Colorado on Saturday, and it's a it's a noon kick out there, but at 10 a.m. You know, Mountain Time, noon for the East Coast. He said, "Wait a second, I, I'm going to have to wake up. Somebody have to wake me up to get me to the game." As the Noel say, on the Buffalo. Yeah, yeah the I think I think Florida State's been asleep for about two years, home team. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I like Colorado's chances of winning that football game. Okay. Well, the ACC is 9-7 and seven in out-of-conference games. We saw Florida State struggle a little bit last week with UAB, didn't we? Yeah, they did for three and a half yeah. quarters. Yeah. What, yeah. Is, what does it have to do with their chances of winning in Boulder, the ACC's non-conference? Altitude, right? Cody Hawkins, I like him at quarterback. It's a game going west. You just told me about it. that gun. Bobby Bowden can't even out in the morning now. Altitude is no joke. That's a real deal. Remember us? We played New England. Never deal. could beat the Broncos. We'd yeah. go out there and train for a month and couldn't That's beat your upset special for this week. The Colorado That's the over upset the special. Yeah. Mark that down. And you don't like it because you're like, no, I just, I have my doubts about your yeah. pick. Steffi steps up. Now he puts it short to Lattimore, catches it in traffic and gets a first down. That's the second or third time I've seen opportunities for him to go up the field with the ball, and he just doesn't pull the trigger, winds up dumping it you, off. You know what Ralph Friesen said in our meetings was that many times Steffi will see it, and, and, and when he looks on his at the receiver wide going deep, at that moment, he's maybe a yard on the defensive back. He's wanting him to go and let it go. He's yeah. open. Yeah, it's a methodical offense. They can't really afford to be down 24 points here. It's the first time they've passed for a first down since that 75-yard touchdown drive back in the first quarter. That's Joey Hanos with the catch. I correct myself. That's a night game. So Bobby was saying he'd have to stay up late to play in that game because it's, it's going to be so late on the East Coast. Just, just have him uh, have a little clock stuff. extra chocolate cake delivered to his room, you know? All right. That's what the <laughs> cup of coffee's all about. Hey, I'll give you one. Think about Ohio State and Washington. Yeah. Washington's a good football team. The top Beckman and the Buckeyes don't show yeah, up. Washington's Washington. terrific job on defense yes. against Boise State. I, I still need right. to see a little bit more to believe that they can take down Ohio State. Jake Locker's the real deal. Nice. No, terrific. He's going to face a better defense than he's faced in his college career. Again, the short flip to Lattimore has room and blockers and gets into West Virginia territory. Back to Reese for a 30 to 30 update. All right, Chris, punishment handed down to the New England Patriots for the whole spyware scenario. Caught the Jets trying to spy and videotape their signals. Belichick fined 500 grand, team fined 250, and they have to forfeit a first round pick if they make the playoffs. Second and third round pick if somehow they don't make the playoffs. Greg Oden. Portland's probably not going to the playoffs. He's going to miss the entire season after having microfracture surgery on his right knee. Sports Center after the game, you can always stay current with ESPN News. Race, thanks. Doug, you play for the Patriots. Belichick, half a million bucks that's, fine. Ouch. That's steep. I, you know, is that taking into consideration what a specific guy is making when you set fines? Or are you setting the <laughs> fine for the violation? No, I love well, hey, Roger Goodell, the new commissioner, has done one thing and he's been consistent with it. If you mess around, Goodell's going to get you. And I think it's great for the National Football League. At a time where there's so many questions about the integrity of pro sports, Goodell has a firm hand on that league. I agree. He's chosen to, he's chosen to draw the line there. I mean, that, that still seems a pretty stiff fine. It's kind of like the Casablanca scene when shocked, shocked that gambling is going on. I, I mean, again, are you, are you shocked? Everyone by has this? stood up top with binoculars yes. and tried to steal signs and looking across, and you set your backup quarterbacks and your kickers and punters to eye signals and try to come up with stuff. 
The videotape's a little bit different. Yeah, it's a different level. I, I, <laughs> I think this. The first round draft pick if they make the playoffs. That the, the money's one deal. You know, hey, Belichick makes a lot of money, the Patriots have a lot of money. But when you start losing first round draft choices, yeah. that gets at you. Because you gotta but in the NFL, you gotta have draft picks to win. That's that's a, a pretty strong statement that you don't want to do that. What happened to the days of ten thousand dollar fines? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is my, my time. this is half a million. This is half a million dollars. Hello, darling. That's like to go home and your wife say, honey, uh, you got docked 500 grand today? I was a little late for work. You idiot. Third and five. <laughs> Steffi looking right all the way and it's complete to a Kendo. Kendo into the secondary, shoved out near the 20. So an important third and five conversion for Maryland to have any chance of closing this gap in the final seven minutes. Steffi, five of five on this drive. You know, they've got an opportunity here to start throwing the football because it's, it's running late and you're down. He's getting into a rhythm. He's throwing the ball five of his last five, moving the ball, taking a read, starting to get comfortable. When you run, run, throw on third down or play action every now and then, there's no rhythm for a quarterback. This is giving him an opportunity to get in some kind of rhythm. Moore cuts it back. Cannot get away. Look Slavonic on the stop. Backup defensive tackle from Pittsburgh. Tennessee, Florida this weekend be a pretty good matchup. You know, we start talking about the top teams in the country. I really believe Florida's defense will come together. I mean, it, and it's in the swamp, so they're going to have support there. I don't think Tim Tebow will have a bad game. Uh, I think this is a show them game show the country game Tennessee says they want to see what Tebow can show them they, they don't really find themselves impressed with the competition for Tebow in his first year uh, yeah. yeah he we saw him as a runner last year we're starting to see him as a passer now he's going against a legitimate defense yeah. and we'll see what happens on the flip side of that Eric Ainge is very impressive in the passing game passing for the end zone looking for Hanos in complete double coverage but the thing about Florida at that swamp, been there many times, you, it's just really an advantage. Tebow's not intimidated. He's been there, he's been in the big games before, worked on his throwing mechanics, you know? Yeah. You know, says he's throwing the ball, his shoulder's not bothering him, arm's not bothering him. I think the offense is fine. It's gonna be that young defense of Florida that's gonna have to show up. I'm looking for two things this weekend. Florida's defense, see how good they are, and I wanna see USC show up in Lincoln. Uh, they'll show up. Nah, the I'm talking about. I'm talking about off the plane. They'll be there. They'll be there. They'll make their presence felt. I promise you, Fred. Third and long for Steffi. Fires for the end zone touchdown. Danny Okendo. That was a nice throw. Very nice job. He had a receiver going down the middle of the field, one up the left sideline, put his eyes out to the left to freeze the safety right down the middle of the field. Beautiful throw. 22 yards. But you know what? It's that foot fire at the line of scrimmage. You get a Here, lot of focus on Hayward, Hayward Bay, Bay yeah. all on the right side, opens up the left side of the field. Nobody in the middle to help out. OB Casey knocks it through. So Steffi, an impressive drive, six for seven, 84 yards. The problem is it comes after the Mountaineers had a comfortable lead. Still up by 17, 5.50 to play. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood, and in part by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. There you go, Craig. Now, these are Maryland crab cakes, okay? It's all jumbo lump, no filler, all right? You know what Not no that filler Texas means? You know what barbecue. no filler means, though, right? My parents grew up in Baltimore. Right. Steam crabs with Old Bay seasoning and jumbo lump crab cake. Well, what's the Who's filler? When you, have a, when you have a crab cake, what, 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 yeah, all that breaded, breaded stuff. Breaded stuff. Ready? Yeah. yeah which, you know, good. Leave, no, 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 no. no. Well, the crab meat, see, the deal is the crab meat costs a whole lot of money. So in order to get a lot of filling, you got to put some filler in there. And once you do that, you can still almost get the same amount of money for a 10-ouncer 
That's what the that's what the restaurants yeah. will do. They and that's what you'll get all around the country. But in Maryland, you get Maryland crab cakes. But they have dollars here too. I'm sure there's some. We found them last night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take two. What an education. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Happy Matt near faithful. It's an onside kick. Maryland men had a hand on it, and now we're scrumming midfield. Terrapins football. <laughs> How many chances did they have? Boy, there was that shades of Oklahoma, Oregon last year. The guy comes out of the pile with the ball. Moses Foku, the man who recovered it. Maryland needs to get the ball back quickly, obviously, and here's the first chance to get it. Boom. Special teams, the golden rule, go get the ball if you're on the hands team. Don't wait on it to come to you. But, hey, if you get the ball, you make sure everybody in the stadium knows that you recovered the ball. That, that was Chris uh, Roberts, the <laughs> kicker, who had a first chance to grab it. He didn't really wrap it up, but he got popped, and Foku, the linebacker, had to come in there and grab a hold of it. So now, Steffi and the offense at midfield, down by 17. Pressure's off the edge, and they've got it. Negro on the blitz, got him. Yeah, West Virginia said enough of this sitting back and playing zone coverages <laughs> and letting this kid complete balls. We're coming after I hope him. He can't lip read, by the way. Yeah. Rig is his reaction. He just said, My nose is tickling me <laughs> and I'm going to rub it. That was after the onside but kick. See, that's obviously. a football coach, though. You know, every phase of the game, it's an opportunity in a live situation to work your hands team. Execute the play because you're going to have to do it in a meaningful way one day. But a meaningful play in the sack pushes him back to the 41, second and 20. A rush three, drop eight, and once again, trouble. This time it's the shotgun snap dropped by Steffi. The Terrapins are going backwards. Yowzers. And if you're Ralph Friesen, you're sitting there saying, come on, fellas. We got to finish strong. We got to build for the season. Let's do this thing and execute the game like it's supposed to. Think about a momentum killer in the last two plays. Uh, the, the blitz on first down is what started it with the negative play, and now it's third and a mile and a half. And I'll tell you what, you make the call, kid. I'm not calling the play for you. Lattimore's in the backfield, third and 24. Drop eight in coverage, and he sneaks it into Hayward Bay. He doesn't have first down yardage. He's back at the 46. Ryan Mundy on the stop, but still a nice throw over the middle to set up a makeable fourth down play. He turned that ball loose. He just reared back and stuck it in there. Nice gain on the play. Get yourself a manageable down and distance. A lot of white jerseys dropped, as you said, Chris. Eight go into coverage to be able to see the play and hit the receiver. Building block. Like I said, he's he's gaining a rhythm to his passing game here by allowing him in the last two drives to start throwing the football. He got 18, needs six more on fourth down. It's the West Virginia fans who almost outnumber the Maryland folks making a lot of noise here. Steffi, sack, Magro got him again. What a series. From Mark Magro, the senior linebacker from right there in Morgantown. Two sacks of Steffi, and the Mountaineers take over. Went to sleep up front. They came with a little blitz there. Receiver's not working to get open for him, and he can't see downfield. Steffi well, just didn't see the game. Then. I think the ball's got to go there. He had enough time. I thought they had a hat on a hat for a while. You knew the blitz was coming. But Pressure was going mean, to get to you. The receivers were doing nothing. It's fourth down. The ball's got to go. So just give him a chance. It did go. Yeah, go it down went over to ground. West Virginia. <laughs> Slayton and Schmidt back in the game, but now Jarrett Brown, the backup quarterback, in for the Mountaineers. <laughs> Sophomore of the West Palm Beach. It's Slayton. Wow. Had a burst. Gained almost 10. We talked all evening about the intimidating frightening aspect of speed in the backfield West Virginia unleashed the weapons that the country knows about Slayton and White Raynaud but then here comes Noel Devine the true freshman joining the crew here and what a night he's had to build on a big touchdown run that he had against Marshall last week 
He only averages 16.3 per carry this season on 15 carries. Darius Raynaud, we haven't really heard a lot from tonight. He's another explosive player. Now you put Devine on the other side. You've got all kinds of really powerful explosive players. I want to see the wishbone. I want to see the true wishbone, though. <laughs> Rich said, you know, Chris, I don't know much about that wishbone, though. I don't no, know he, we're going to do he that. He says he can't coach. He doesn't yeah. need to coach it with these guys. Yeah, I want to see Devine, Slayton, and Schmidt, and White. I want to see all but four of those guys in the wishbone. That goes against He wants to spread people out and create <laughs> space. They'll get space when they break a tackle. Oh. Oakley work for Oklahoma. All right, speaking of space, how about Aaron? What do you got for us? All right, well, I've got a, you know, little story about the Heisman. Of course, Steve Slayton, Pat White potential. Well, they are Heisman candidates. And Rich Rodriguez told his marketing department as well as his SID, do not campaign for these guys to win the Heisman. He said, we're on TV enough. There are enough articles written about him. Team success builds individual success. And he said, quite frankly, we don't need to single them out. And I know, Craig, you like that method there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm old school. Doug and I both are, you know, really when you look absolutely. at it. But when you look at the Big East, Brian Brown down there throwing for a lot of yards. Google it over and you go to Ray Rice. We saw him last Friday show. Night. Ray Rice is a great football player. When Mike Till throwing the ball so well, Rice is going to have huge numbers. See, We've seen tonight we, White but Slate. we do the same thing everyone else is doing. You, you clump them together. Uh, They're in the, well, when it comes time to vote, they're gonna half, the, half the people that want to vote for one of them are going to vote for either White or Slate, and they're going to split the vote and right. not have any chance. Here we go. Let's go. Three of us here, voters in the Heisman. Doug, no, you no, no, the Heisman. No, 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 no. Really does it, does it, no, no, no. But tonight, and let me ask my games. question, Hoss. <laughs> let me ask you my question. Hoss, everybody's okay. Hoss in Texas. Tonight, in this game, in this football game here tonight, Slate or White, after watching tonight on national TV, who would get your vote? Slayton or White? For the Heisman? No, who's no, tonight? Play the, game. The... Play the game. Out of this game tonight. Just this one right here. Slayton. Slayton. The game Me too. Tonight, Slayton. So but we I didn't split the vote there, did the we? The overall success of this offense is determined on the decision making of Pat White. No, well, Devine is a productive play, but he's, he's ruining his average, which no, is 16. I wouldn't touch the ball. When you have a 50-yard average, I wouldn't touch the ball again. <laughs> Coach, I'm all right. I'm good. No, thank you. He only got six in that carry, but uh, despite Devine's bust out, the guy who really broke the game open, Steve Slayton, three more touchdowns here. That's Wrangler, five-star player of the game. Again, we talked about the importance of Maryland games. Look at him oh, there up you that go. guy. Yeah. That's pretty good. Cool camaraderie. I think that makes him feel good. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool right the there. The importance of playing against Maryland. This is his last career game. They don't play next year. The school that offered him took it away, and Ralph Friedgen is tired of hearing the story. He'd make a heck of a defensive back, though. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just, he's just an athlete. He, he'd play wherever he wants to. It's Jock Sanders in the ball game. He's a freshman out of St. Petersburg, another young, fast guy. Coming up on Sports Center, Matt Weiner, Neil Everett, get you caught up on all the day's news, including specifics on that massive fine against Belichick and the Patriots for spying on the Jets. Just a very tough news for Portland. Greg Oden, number one pick, out for the season. And of course, a lot more in the playoff chase. It's a deflating loss, but number one pick, right? Yeah, this season. <laughs> that's a blow. You can get the money back, but you'll be several years missing that number one pick. I'm talking about in Greg Oden. Greg, Greg Oden, oh, yeah, yeah, being gone for the year. That's yeah. terrible. There's a force. Tough one there. He was going to come in and make an impact right away. Third and short. It's Brown. Once again, turning and accelerating for the first down. They're just, they're just showcasing <laughs> all these guys, these young guys. They down the helmet inside the one. And Jeff Sanders <laughs> lost that. <laughs> Fellow freshman Hogan collects it, and that'll be the final play. Sports Center is coming up next as West Virginia passes a road test, rushes for 352 yards and wins at 31-14. Very impressive. Offense did their job. Defense did better than I think we thought they would. They stood up. You know, they, they bent for a while, but they stood up to the task. Slayton, three touchdowns, and West Virginia rolls on. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Craig and Doug and Aaron, I'm Chris Fowler. So long. ESPN News will have our post-game extra. Sports Center coming at you right now.